Hello there, very good Saturday morning to you. How are we all today? Hope you're keeping it and we hope you're keeping safe. And we're hoping to keep you busy, inspired and educated in our world of sewing. This is the first time that we've actually been live at eight o'clock in the morning. So um, hopefully you're with us this morning. If you are, we've got a very special early bird at a very reduced price for you. But let me just explain a little bit about Sewing Street if you've happened upon us this morning. We are the UK's only dedicated sewing channel. And at the moment we are live for three hours every morning, seven days a week, eight o'clock, nine o'clock and ten o'clock. And we bring you so many different genres of sewing from quilting to dressmaking, homewares, bag making, cross sticks, sash co, lots and lots of different techniques. So there's something for everybody. And we aim to bring you projects, projects and products that are suitable for every level of sewing as well. So if you're the expert sewer, we'll have something for you. And if you're the complete beginner, we have sewing projects for you as well. Now, it'd be lovely to have your company this morning. If you have any questions, you can join us on our Facebook page which is Sewing Street TV. Um, if you go to visit a post I've got my phone open right now so I can have a look at your um, comments and questions and get back to you. So if you've got any pictures that you'd like to share, any questions or any requests do come through there as well. Now anything that you'd like to order you can take a look on our website which is sewingstreet.com and uh, take a look at everything we have for you in this show and then everything else that we have available for you on the website which is growing by the day. We've only been going for about five or six weeks now, so we're a relatively new channel, but we've got a lot of products for you there. Or you can order on our uh, UK-based phone number, which is 0800 001 4433. Another thing to mention quickly, you will see on your screen when we start to bring you details, all day postage of £3.95. And that means that if you order something now, you will pay for £3.95 for your postage. But if you come back later on in the day, even throughout the hours when we're not live, if you're ordering on the website or the phone, we won't charge you any more for your postage. Order, all the orders are processed at midnight tonight. So anything that you order before midnight will all go in the same postage box. Now I mentioned earlier on um, uh, an offer that we bring you every day which is a reduced price item and this time we're talking cross stitch and there is such a high reduction on this book you wouldn't believe it's only £4.99. I know. Recommended retail price on the back of here is £12.99. Uh, just under five pounds to you and it's a book it's a book to inspire and it's a book for beginners i know when you a lot of the time when you see cross stitch they can be very complicated and very in-depth and something that we aspire to be able to make but there are some very simple designs in here that anybody can get started with um, so you've got the basics of the cross stitch how the stitches actually work three quarter stitches um, back stitch running stitch blanket stitch so not just about cross stitch if you do buy any charts or the charts in here as well, this is a lesson on how to follow those charts. But look, that's a little bow. That has to be the simplest thing that you can possibly make. But these are some of the panels that you have. And it's a very modern kind of look. It's not all, you know, flowers and ribbons and bows. There's some quite masculine things and something for the kids as well. And I think when we're talking children, um, I think a lot of us started with cross stitch. I can remember doing cross stitch at school um, with my Ada and my really thick embroidery thread. I can't remember what I was cross stitching, but I can actually remember the technique. But look at these modern things that you can be doing, as well as kind of traditional as well. And smaller items, even covering buttons. Funny when I saw that picture, that's a big button. <laughs> I don't think the dog's really there. <laughs> and, or it might just be a really big button. Um, but again, oh, there's the, oh, and again, look, huge buttons. Um, but fastenings, you know, I, I like the idea of having smaller projects, particularly if you're teaching somebody how to sew, um, because you're going to be able to finish it quite quickly. You're not going to lose patience as you're, as you're sewing. Um, and of course, you don't have to make something of it sewing wise. You saw a greetings card there. You can put these in little frames. What's with the cats and dogs? <laughs> so you've got your moustaches, little mini samplers, something for small cushion covers. That could be a pin cushion. Traditional sampler with your home sweet home. So, the <laughs> honestly. So there you go. So lots of different ideas, but the most important thing I think is the, the techniques and the hints and the tips that you have in the book. And in fact, no, the most important thing is it's only £4.99. So recommended retail, 
is um, £12.99, but for you today, what's the budgies? Sarah Fordenham, if you're listening, have you got a lot of pets? <laughs> That's just, just not relevant at all. So again, jump up full of lots of ideas and inspiration for you and a great way to get you started. And, uh, and when you've finished all of your projects, you've got lots of animals in the book that you can go, ah, to. <laughs> really? Um, so again, it should be £12.99. Well, we have the stock, only £4.99. So a nice little gift idea, I think, that, that is basic enough for children to understand if you've got the kids at home and uh, they're twiddling their thumbs. Uh, my, <laughs> my mum used to, if I got bored in the summer holidays, I'm like, what can I do? She'd say, um, take your shoes and socks off and play with your toes. It's, it's not the most interesting game, seriously. I did learn how to count to ten very quickly, but that's about all you can do with toes, really, isn't it? So if your kids are getting bored in the holidays or while they're at home, why not set them off with a little bit of cross-stitch? Just something creative, a skill that they can learn. And uh, of the kind of size of things that... <laughs> so budgies. Um, the kind of <laughs> size of projects that you can actually finish. And that's, uh, that is an eyeball, isn't it? I love the idea of buttons, I love the idea of, of these small projects and the fact that they're very modern. Bang and wham. <laughs> so a great introduction to cross stitch, but remember you've also got your, your templates here as well, so you can actually create the designs and more so that you see in the book there as well. So we've got owls and... <laughs> You can cross stitch a shrimp, a little fish look. Yep, dinosaurs, cages. Anyway, that, that is your, um, your early bird special, just £4.99. Now we've got lots in the show that you haven't seen before as well. So we're going to move on to, oh no no, the, we've got some mug rugs coming. We're here for three hours live and all of the shows are themed differently. Um, so coming up in the next hour, we've got a couple of mug rugs and this is quilt as you go. The easiest way of quilting, um, because the, uh, the design is actually already printed out onto your, um, onto your wadding. Incredibly popular and incredibly easy way of beginning to quilt. Or if you're quilting, maybe you've got a large project on the go at the moment and you just want something small, um, something quick, you've got an afternoon free maybe, um, then this is going to be ideal for you as well. Uh, the kind of project that you can start and finish within about an hour. And if you're worried about piecing pieces of fabric together and, and having accurate points, this template, this printed wadding, kind of takes all of that issue away from you. So we've got a couple of different designs. You can shop ahead if you like, if you go to the website, sewingstreet.com, and they're already on there, so you would be able to buy those. And get the June Taylor basting spray while you're there as well, because that's going to be really useful while you're quilting them. Um, right, we've got some new fabrics for you. And it's Frozen. It's still popular, isn't it? It's still a popular movie with the kids um, and with the adults for that matter as well. So we've got lots of different designs for you and they do go together really well. So there's half a metre in total here, which is that. So plenty enough to maybe make a couple of cushion covers if you use a plain fabric on the backing. Um, this is by the half metre, so if you wanted a metre, order two, and you'll have one complete piece of fabric. Then you could be talking about um, dresses, pyjamas, nighties, um, little home deck items, bags, drawstring bags. There's so many different things you can make. And the print isn't too large, so if you're making smaller items, or even if you're uh, English paper piecing, if you have a two inch hexagon, you should be able to fit any one of those images inside it. So you can make a beautiful quilt out of that as well. So that's the first one, which is Frozen Alpine. And then this is really lovely. The thing I did, when I first saw these um, fabrics a while ago, actually, I just I, I like them because they're. If it makes sense, it's almost like the grown-up version of frozen fabrics. Some novelty fabrics or licensed fabrics can be very novelty and very childlike, but I love the designs and the colours that have been chosen here because again they're a little bit more grown-up, a little bit more sophisticated than you would expect from um, a children's themed fabric. 
So again at £6.99. The previous one you saw was frozen alpine on white. This one's actually got the, it's almost like a Scandinavian cross stitch on a dark navy background. So let's have a look at Elsa close up. So there we go. So I think we might have the wrong details on the screen. Was the white fabric the previous one? So again, at £6.99, if you did want to order more than one, they come joined up. But this is what I mean about the, the like the Scandinavian kind of look, almost almost like a cross stitch, isn't it? In between here and around the around the border. So what do you want to make? I'm thinking clothing with this because the, the quality of the fabric is lovely. It's got a really nice drape to it. So it would be nice and, and comfortable to actually wear. But maybe it's going to be a larger quilt you're going to make. They've got time at home. Um, maybe you're going to set yourself a task for the rest of the year. Hand sewing. You're going to be doing some hand sewing quilting maybe. Okay, so this is Frozen Alpine Wonder Elsa. Okay. If you want to get ahead, have a look on the website because they'll all be on there now. So you can see them all together, you don't have to wait for me. Okay, moving on, the turquoise colour here. We have Elsa and is the snowman Olfa? Olfa? Can't remember. Olaf, that's the one. I'm thinking rotary cutters and rulers. Um, and a lovely uh, bold background on this as well. There's lots of colours and a really delicate print. Even when you see on, um, on her dress, the very fine print on there is just gorgeous. Sign of a good quality fabric, that isn't it? So let me burn it around so you can see. So just looking at the detail on her dress, the lace here is absolutely beautiful. And that again, well, to have such a fine print, if you look at the... Like the snowflakes printed on here is beautiful. What's he got there? It's like a book. But lots of different designs. Again, if you wanted to cut these out and use them as a plique. Um, and fussy cutting, there's a lot you can do with that as well. So it's really pretty. So this one is Frozen Adventure Blue. And again, it's £6.99. So you're there on the website already, good for you. Get your shopping out of the way before you decide what you're going to do for the rest of your Saturday. Apparently we're going to have good weather this weekend, aren't we? So it'd be nice if you had a garden or a balcony so you can spend a little bit of time in the sunshine. Right, now this one, I'm imagining you're going to cut out all of these boxes and then sew them back together again. Maybe put um, a border in between them um, or some sashing so you can kind of stretch out all of the designs and, uh, and make your fabric go a little bit further. If you just quilt them as they are, you've got a non-directional print, as you can see, they're all over the place, um, which, is, which is what we like for quilting. So we don't have to waste fabric um, by cutting in a, a particular direction. Or again, you can use these individually, maybe you're going to make um, pockets out of them um, or put patches or even as a, as a border across the bottom of a pair of curtains or a blind, I think would look really well. So this one is patchwork design. I know the deer is Sven, isn't he? So let's so Anna and, and Elsa and Olfa and Beta, Carotin, um, all the characters on here. So Olaf, Olaf the Snowman, this is a border print and it's got little sleighs on there as well. Unusual, isn't it? So you could cut those strips out individually. That's, that's quite well placed when you look at it because um, if the snowman were overlapping that line, then you wouldn't be able to cut them out as strips, but you could actually cut between there and there and you've got a whole border without you know, kind of having heads of the, the one below. So that's quite a clever design if you wanted to do that. 
So look, and these are little sleighs. And you've got that, again, that Scandinavian kind of cross-stitch design there as well. So this is um, Olaf fabric, funnily enough, for £6.99. And, and again, you're getting half a metre, and that is 112 centimetres wide, which is 44 inches. And if you wanted more than one, they do come joined up. So you'll get one big piece of fabric. So maybe you're thinking about, I don't know, home deck items, decorating the kids' bedrooms, the nursery maybe. So we've still got three more to go. And then I'll show you them all together just to show how they, they mix and match. There we go. It is twice this size. Um, so we've got... Elsa, Anya and Olaf here, and they're dancing. Pretty colours, aren't they? And it says, um, season to celebrate. I did say Christmas a few times on Thursday, didn't I? But I'm just thinking ahead. If you're going to make a quilt as a Christmas present, and we've got lots of time on our hands at the moment, so it seems, then um, why not get started right now? And these are all non-directional again, so um, for a quilt that's perfect because there's no, there's no right way around for it, there's no upside down. And look at the delicacy again here, tiny, tiny little dots, so pretty. Um, this one is light blue fabric, it's imaginative, and again it's £6.99. Actually, I, I like names that are clear to understand. Sometimes you get these random colour names that you just chartreuse. Yeah. Um, OK, now this, I think, would be a really nice background fabric. We've got two different colour options for you. Um, and it's very gently foiled, so there's a little bit of a shine to it, but it's not a sparkle. So it's not too overpowering. So you can just see with some of the, uh, the snowflakes here, those are actually in silver. So if I just catch the light, you can see there how it, it just has a little bit of a shimmer without too much of a sparkle. So this is blue ice, you can see why. It has such a dimension, doesn't it? Such a clever design. It, you can almost see the layers of the, of the um, ferns and the snowflakes. Like you're looking down through the leaves into water. It's really clever. So that's the blue ice fabric. And then we've got another option for you, which is like the silver. So these would make great blenders so they'll go with any of the other fabrics that you're buying and I'm going to do that so we can see the pair of them any of them so if you've got plain fabric at home already then you know that these are going to blend really well um, but if you just wanted to add an extra little bit of interest go for either of these either the blue or the silver foliage and then maybe a little bit of plain as well, just to break it up. So, you know, if you've got kind of plain blues and things like that, or greys, they'd go with any of those. And these are only £3.99. And again, that's for, for half a metre. But I love that shimmer. Again, it's, it's not all sparkly, it's not overtly Christmas time. And, and even, you know, with the, with the snowflake there, it doesn't scream Christmas. It's, it's just silver. It's lovely. But it is frosty. Frosty foliage. So that's £3.99. Right. Now, the patchwork, just give you a quick reminder of that one because that's been really popular and we only actually have 12 metres left in stock. Do you want it to go for the whole 12 metres? If you're doing a makeover of the bedroom and you're making, I don't know, duvet covers and curtains, order 24 <laughs> and you get the lot all in one, all on one roll. So that's any UQ76 if you'd like to order at just £6.99 for half a metre. Right, we've got more new things for you. Got buttons coming up. As in buttons, not the panto. Here we go. These are really fun. We've got three different sets for you. So first up we've got daisies. 
And these are, uh, they're proper little buttons with a shank on the back, so you could use these for children's knitwear maybe, if you're making little cardigans, for decorations, for those projects where your points don't quite meet up, so you put a button on to disguise them. And they're, they're just fun, aren't they? They're pretty, they're uplifting, I love the different sizes, daisies being one of my favourite flowers, I just think they're so, they're lovely. Um, and they're only £2.99, you've got a pack of seven of those, and again they've got the little shank on the back. So they're perfect for uh, for knitwear. And although you've got the petals, they're not sharp, so if you are using on knitwear, they're not going to snag anything. So they're £2.99. Don't just order these on their own because we're going to charge you £3.95 postage. Um, but if you have already ordered some of the fabric and you wanted some of these as well, we won't charge you any extra postage at all, which is where it makes it really affordable. The more that you buy, the more you're going to save on your postage. So you won't get £3.95 postage for every single item you order. You'll get one postage of £3.95 for everything you order today. So those are assorted daisies, pack of seven. We've got ladybirds. And these two for a pack of seven again. They're about half an inch across. And again, they have the, the shank on the back. So a nice little decoration. Um, maybe you are embroidering in the hoop or doing a little bit of cross stitch and you want to decorate um, whatever it is you're making with them. So a nice little accent, put them all together on a row, on a headband maybe, or if you're making a, a belt or make them into a brooch. You can make a leaf out of felt behind them, sew this on the top, sew a little brooch fastening or a safety on the back, and you've got a ladybird brooch. And they're only £2.99, you've got a pack of seven of those. And then finally, you're going to love these. They're bees, bees are really, bees are the new owls, I think. We love bees. And uh, £2.99 again, this time you're getting 12 of them, so they're slightly smaller in size. But if you have um, maybe bee fabric, bee fabric's really popular. If you have one, maybe one of the, the beehive um, pin cushions, I can see behind me just here. See behind me just here. Um, maybe B is the theme of your bedroom, sewing room, bathroom, whatever it is. Just nice little accents for you there. So again, they're £2.99 and there are 12 of those in total. Right, we have my Easter panels back in stock. That was quick, wasn't it? Um, so these are drawn by my own fair hand and they're huge panels of fabric. Open them all the way up and you're getting all of that. So lovely, bright, vibrant Easter pink and this is the bunny. And then there's the two long strips of daisy and blossom print on the opposite side as well. So have a look at the little characters. We did name all of these the other day, but I've forgotten. So these are all based on my drawings. Um, so I do the drawings. I pass them on to Tom, who's a graphic designer, and he put them together in, in the order and put the pink spotty background in the background. And then these are printed in the UK as well. So it's all very kind of in-house, if you like. Exclusive to Sewing Street, you won't find these anywhere else. I haven't even got any. I haven't even got any to demo with. Um, so the only place you're going to buy them is right here. So we have the rabbit with a little hat on. And it, look, I told you daisies were one of my favourite flowers. We've got daisies around his hat. I'm going to call him Derek. And then there's the chick. With the, um, with the daisy in his mouth, that's Brian. And then we have the little rabbit holding a flower and, um, and she's got flowers on her, hair, on her head, on her hat as well, that's Mavis. I'm, I'm still calling this one Boris because it just makes me smile. <laughs> um, we've got a rabbit with a basket with a flower in it, that's Doreen. And then the eggs hatched, so a bucket full of eggs with one little chick that's hatched there, that's Frank. And then down here, this is, this is Colin, so he's got his hat on as well. We've got a little lamb with a hat on his bottom, it's Graham. And lamb with a basket with a chick in it, that's Brenda. There's Boris again. Another lamb holding a daisy, that's... Um, Grenville, and uh, then we've got a little chick with rabbit's ear on as well, that's Nigel. And then on this side, we have 
two large pieces which is just daisies and the, um, and the blossom. And the daisies, again, have got the spot in the background there. Now, it's just £14.99. I'm reckoning you've got enough to make an apron, to make Easter cushion covers, to brighten up your conservatory, maybe. Maybe it's a child's bedroom. Um, this has been specifically laid out in the way that it is because you can just quilt this as it is um, and make a small quilt. Maybe use these pieces as borders or if you have extra fabric of your own, some plain pinks or yellows or any of these pastel colours, we've got some on the website. If you haven't, you could just make borders with that and make that as big as you like. Or you can cut these out individually. You've got 12 of the smaller images so you could use those as pockets maybe on little girls dresses or on aprons and things like that and then you've got a pin cushion or a small cushion in the center so use it as it is or chop it up into individual bits and bobs that's entirely up to you so if you've ordered already because we haven't got any left of the ones that we had on Thursday let me know what you're going to make and why did you buy it and what you're going to do with it and then I'd like to see pictures as well so that's the bunny these are the lambs. So we've got the same images, so I shan't name them all again because that's getting a bit tedious. Um, but this one has the lamb in the centre instead of the rabbit. So you've got all the same characters around the outside, but this one is featuring the lamb. And of course it's in the blues with the blue spot behind it. So again, quilt it as it is if you wanted to. Make a big floor cushion out of it. You need some backing fabric for it. And you've got the blue version of the... Um, of the plain panels here as well with the blossom and with the the daisies on blue with the spots in the background too 100 percent cotton all designed and manufactured in the uk for just 14 pounds and 99 pence I'll just fold that away now we have another book this is a lovely book no budgies um, that handmade touch, you've got 20 simple sewing projects. Actually, I love the budgies. That really made my day. I thought that was so for Look, budgies. Um, nothing to do with the cross stitch, just budgies. Um, <laughs> made me laugh. So in here, you've got some really classy projects for your old cat. <laughs> what is it with authors and their animals? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have animals in my books. Maybe I should start. It should be a trend, shouldn't it? Oh, there we go. Um, so, materials, but look how modern this is. It's, it's a really classy book. Um, the tools that you need and techniques, but let's get on to some of the projects. Really well, simple projects, but really lovely, really well made. So there's the fold over pouch, the quag zipper pouch, quilt as you go. That's what we're gonna be looking at in the next hour, the June Taylor panels. Um, oh, that scissor keeper's nice. I've not seen one that shape before. Well, it's scissor shape, but not with a zip down the side. That's unusual. Little pleated pouch. Remember, you've got 20 of these in total. Lots of pictures, which I like in a book. And very simply explained as well. This, again, would be a great book for somebody who's just starting to sew. Because there's nothing daunting in here. There's nothing, you know, you're not making a full-size quilt. It's not dressmaking. Um, these are simple projects, which are using small amounts of fabric as well. So if you have fabric at home already, and by saying fabric at home already, I know we sell fabric, so I shouldn't really. You've got fabric at home already. You've got tablecloths, you've got old clothes, you've got um, maybe bedding that you don't use anymore. And a lot of these projects can just be made with recycled fabric that you've already got. Lots of stitching techniques, you've got big stitch quilting. There is a quilt in there, so if you're a beginner, this could be something that you work your way up towards. And then items for your craft space, love the colours. But of course, you choose any fabric that you like. You could make these in the, in the frozen fabric, if you prefer. A lot of these fabrics you could make in our super soft PU faux leather. A few different styles of bags as well, so the faux leather is going to be gorgeous for those customising. So there's lots of hints and tips in here as well. <laughs> there's your cat. That, but this is relevant because at least she's sewing for her pet. I can't imagine, and, and you know, do let me know if you have, what are you going to sew for your budgie? So we've got a, a little collar, a catnip. Oh, one of my cats goes silly for catnip. Honestly, he's, he's just... As soon as you get the cat, he only has a little bit of a sprinkle, but he just he goes all rolly-eyed and crazy for it. It's... So, 
So, uh, so catnip fish. <laughs> Thought that was his tail for a minute. So my cat wouldn't do that with, with catnip. He'd be on his back. <laughs> I love that. I wonder if you could increase the size and make it into a child's teepee. And there we go. And then you've got your templates and patterns in the back there as well. So that's that handmade touch. 20 projects. But I think that's, that's a really stylish book. That's... That's the kind of book that I'd go out and buy. Um, quick stock up for you on your Alpine Wonder White. Is that, is that that one? We've only got nine metres of this one left. So that's going really quickly. So if you would like to order, I'd, I'd do this sooner rather than later because you can see stocks depleting now. It's 0800 001 443 if you want to order on the phone lines, that's a UK based call centre. Um, or you could go to sewingstreet.com and take a look on the website there. Um, with the fabrics that we have like this, um, very rarely do we get things back in stock again. Or it may take a while, particularly at the moment with the way that deliveries are and warehouses shutting down every five minutes. Um, so we have stock for you at the moment. But if you are thinking larger projects, maybe if it is something like um, a bed quilt that you're going to make or pillowcases or something like that, then I'd order that sooner rather than later, if that's OK with you. Oh, and the foliage have been very popular as well. <clears throat> we've got silver and we've got the blue in these. And these are the ones that have a little bit of a twinkle going on. Um, so they, the snowflakes are foiled. So you can just see there a little bit of a shimmer. And these blend so well with any of the, um, the frozen fabrics that you're going for as well. Half a metre is £3.99. But even if you don't want, even if you're not going for the frozen fabric, imagine that with a white or with a turquoise. A lot of people, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about Christmas again. It's bizarre, isn't it? Um, a lot of people have more modern um, Christmases. I, I like I like a bit of both. I've got a traditional kind of bit with the reds and greens and Christmas decorations I've had all my life. Um, but I do have a white tree. And I think this would look lovely if he, you know, as a table setting in a modern setting. Um, so the table run, you can make a tablecloth because remember if you order more than one unit, so this is for half a metre, but if you ordered two, three or four, they all come in one go. Um, so you could easily make a tablecloth, £3.99 for half a metre, it's not breaking the bank. Um, but a table runner, maybe placemats. You could even make those lovely big bows that go over the back of your dining chairs. Hopefully, by Christmas, we'll be having lots of people around for dinner. Um, so you can kind of coordinate the whole room. And that's really pretty. So that is the blue. And this one is the silver. And that's the size. So you've got 112 wide. 44 inches. Half a metre in length. Isn't that gorgeous? Again, for just £3.99, and it's 100% cotton. So that's frosty foliage in silver. Have we had any messages yet this morning? Are we up? Um, Kirst has sent a message on Facebook. She says, I love the quilt as you go kits. That's coming up in the next hour. I've made a few different quilt kits, a tote bag and mug rugs. These are the mug rugs. We've got uh, mug mats, they're calling them. We'll, we've got these two of these coming up in the next hour. Um, she said, they gave me the confidence to try some patchwork and doing the layering up and quilting myself. Since having to stay in, I've become a bit obsessed. So I think my family are all getting lap quilts for Christmas. It's not the only one that's talking about Christmas. That's our, our Facebook page, um, Sewing Street TV. If you want to send a message, let me know what you're up to this morning. And if you have, of course, any questions, um, then come and let me know. It'd be lovely to hear from you this morning. Let me know I'm not on my own with the budgies. Not really on my own. There's two of us here. We've got minimal staff. It's so quiet on the roads this morning as well. But it was five o'clock on a Saturday morning. So you kind of expect that. OK. These are more of my panels. Um, there's two sets. So this is sewing machines. There's also a bobbins one. Now these have a, a bit of a different layout to the Easter ones because I'm not imagining that you're going to make a quilt out of these. You could make a wall hanging. Um, but I'm thinking you're probably going to cut those up 
which is why they're positioned as they are like so. And the sewing machines are my actual sewing machines. I have quite a collection of vintage sewing machines. I love them. And I brought in some of the little ones and these actually feature on the fabric. So they'll work as well. My little granddaughter's been learning how to sew on these. Um, on the blue one particularly, it's still threaded up just as a chain stitch, so there's no bottom thread to it, but just a nice little stitch. Um, and the bobbins are on there as well, so that, that's the, the, the basis of them, the idea behind them. These are photographs, so they're not my sketches, my husband's a photographer, so he's taking the pictures. And again, Tom has, um, did, oh no, no, Amy has digitised them and um, popped them onto the the background as well. They've all kind of been rebranded because we can't obviously use um, branded names. So if you have a look, never thought I'd have my name on a sewing machine. So this one, I sh I'll show you the original one because I think we'll, I think we'll be okay. I'm not going to be in too much trouble. So that's the original machine. It's, we have had the colour changed on it. So it's actually based on a Vulcan, but we've changed it to sewing. <laughs> And where it says junior here, it's got my name on it, look. It's even got my typeface, everything. <laughs> and then the large one here, this one was a Jones, but we changed it to Bobbin, that's my dog. And Bobbin. And what does that one say? Oh, I can't quite make that one out. That's a Fister and Rossman machine. Um... This one was a Novum, we've just had that one taken off altogether. That is the red machine, which is another Vulcan, which is that one. And that says Friends and Debbie Shaw. And that one is another child's machine, which is that one. And then finally, that's, oh, that's got button written on it. <laughs> and then there's two plain panels, plain panels, there's a two longer panels there as well. Um, now, I've got some bits and bobs around the studio that my girls have made up. And I did say the other day I was going to name check everybody. And I forgot. Sorry. Melissa made the drawstring bag. Leslie made the sewing machine cover. Melissa made the, um, the wall hanger with the pockets on it. This is a slightly deeper colour. This is the spring colour that you're getting, but you can get an idea of what you can make with them. And then Anne made the little girl's dress. And Jackie made the book cover. So, so I, will, I will look up who made the apron. Unless you're on the messaging, girls, if you're watching. Can't remember who made the apron. I can't remember who made the cushion covers. There's the cushion girls. Sorry. I, I just think, you know, people... I've, I've got a lovely group of girls that I work with that make up samples for me, that, that test things out for me. So originally when I had the first ones of these printed, I sent them out to the girls and just said, what do you think? And they tell me. So a lot of things get changed if they don't like them. And, uh, and then they, they volunteer to make up these samples for me, which is wonderful. So I'm not... Um, I don't like to take the credit for things that other people have made. So thank you, ladies. So, this is the second panel, which is bobbins. And it's the same idea, so you've got the square pieces and then you've got the two long ones each side. And these are the bobbins. Which again, in fact, to change the names on. So they've got my name on. <laughs> Debbie Shaw, Debbie Shaw saying, Debbie Shaw saying. Oh, they're all Debbie Shaws on this one. It's all about me. <laughs> And again, you've got some of the same machines on here. Um, this one is, that one's a Singer. It would have had a wooden base in it. Do you remember those? They, they, they like a wooden box and they clipped underneath uh, with these clips on the side here. Um, and the number of times I can remember picking them up and the clips weren't fast and this blooming big heavy box would swing down and all the accessories would fall out of it. Um, these are the kind of machines that a lot of us learnt to sew on, myself included. So it wasn't a hand crank one, it's an electronic one, but they were so heavy. Everything was cast about them, but I, I, loved, I like the smell of them, if that makes sense. They all smell quite oily, and uh, it just takes me back to when I was younger. And then down here, so these are all kind of end-on pictures, because this is focusing on the bobbins. Um, but there I've got my Jones and my Novum. And then on this side, 
it's all Rosa Bobbins. So I know Melissa's covered buttons in some of these, which look really nice. English paper piecing would be quite a novelty. I think you can make some lovely projects with those. Um, you can cut these into borders because they're all in a row. So you can put a border around a, a, a quilt or maybe it's a sewing machine dust cover you're making, something for your sewing room. Um, sewing storage maybe, it could be boxes that you're making, somewhere to keep all of your bobbins. That would be appropriate, a bobbin box with bobbins all over them. So lots of different uses, again, all British designed, um, photographed and printed onto 100% cotton, all in the UK. Oh, Mary sent a message in, it's on Facebook. Let's see if I can find you. Oh, here we go. Hi, Mary. She says, morning, Debbie. I've ordered the frozen fabrics and the PU in mustard, which you missed out on last time. Oh, it's gone now. We haven't even shown you that. Well done for you. This is what I'm saying about getting ahead and shopping on the website. We're selling out of things that you're ordering without even mentioning them. Um, missed out on, the, out on the first time around and enjoying the show. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for joining us this early in the morning. This is the first day that we've been with you live at 8 o'clock in the morning. This is now going to happen every single day. So we have three shows for you, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. So we go live with our first early bird at um, 8 o'clock in the morning. I should be so glad when it's light when I come into work. It doesn't seem quite right getting up in the dark, does it? So if you want to send me a message again like Mary and Kirsty have, then it's our Facebook page, which is Sewing Street TV. Now then, what should we show? What should we show you next? Better show you this PU fabric, hadn't we? Before we sell out of any more. Right. There is PU fabric and there is PU fabric. I'll start in the right order with the brown. A lot of the time with laminated fabrics, it can be very stiff and very shiny. It can be very difficult to sew through and very stiff if you wanted to make a garment out of it. This isn't. It's a dressmaking quality. It has a wonderful drape. It's really, really soft. And if you are going to make garments out of this, maybe you're going to make a skirt or a jacket. It's perfect. It's perfect for that kind of thing because um, it's washable cool wash but you can iron it as well you can actually in fact I shall do that let me just go down in the cellar again and plug in the iron and bring that up there and an ironing mat impromptu never iron from the top it will melt but on the back of this fabric it's knitted so it has a little bit of stretch with it, which makes it comfortable to wear. And this is a cotton backing, so this is the backing that you're going to be able to iron. Um, if you even catch this side with your iron, it, it, it'll melt, so don't do that. Um, while you're there, just look at the selvage. This is what your fabric's going to look like. Some have more of the cotton shown behind there. That's perfectly normal, that is a selvage. And you may even find that some of this is peeling a little bit, but that's absolutely fine. But this shows you actually the construction of the fabric. So this is a really kind of stretchy, um, plastic coating on the on the back of the fabric so when you get it home it will have been folded up like so a lot of PUs you can't do this with it's not recommended that you use the iron on its hottest so I'll, I'll do that and with lots of steam and those creases just melt away now I've washed this on a 40 degree wash I don't normally wash any hotter than that it really isn't recommended but it washes up really well and I think this is probably going to be more look at that they've just dropped away so that's how creased it was so that's where where is it gone there's the crease and it's just kind of melted away but again you can see the drip the drip the drape it's lovely it's a really lovely fabric um, I've bought lots from different websites over the years because I make a lot of bags and um, this is perfect for bag making but a lot of them I just don't like working with. I love working with this one. It's, I, I really recommend it. It's really wide as well. It's 160 centimetres in width. It's 150 centimetres in width. Normally with 160 I can't quite reach the end of it. Um, so yeah, it's really wide. You get a lot for your money there. And it's the kind of thing that you can mix well with other fabrics too. So whether it's other PUs or whether it's um, canvas or denim or even cottons, if you've got a lighter weight of fabric, you may want to put some stabiliser on the back of it. 
So, but I love it. It's one of my favourite fabrics to work with. You won't be disappointed. Um, we have the red. Now, if you're going to go for two together, there's lots you can mix with. Um, so the red and the brown are a really classic combination. So you could have maybe the main part of your bag in the dark brown and then a flap in the red. And the red, red laminates can look really cheap. And this doesn't. It's got, it's got a grain to it, so it's kind of leather-like. But it's not too shiny, is it? It's just got that lovely sheen. And again, it's so soft. Now this one, this is a, bit, a little bit more like latte, isn't it? And this one with the dark brown, don't they go so well together? So we're calling that one taupe. But if you're a traditional kind of girl and you just like really classy colours, then you can't go wrong with these neutrals. And even if you go for the taupe with the black, look how they look together. So I'm, I'm thinking bags again, um, but it doesn't just have to be bags. You know, my, my jacket, I didn't make this, but this is made out of a, a PU. And this fabric has that same kind of drape, so if you wanted to make something with a, with a waterfall, then you can do. It's gorgeous, so that's your black. And then finally is the navy. The navy and the red go nice together. Quite nautical kind of look there. But look at the colour of that navy. That is such a classy indigo, deep, inky blue. But again, look at that softness. And this is four layers I'm squishing up here. And again, at £6.99, it's, that is such a good price. And we did have a mustard, but it's, uh, it's already gone, I'm afraid. So I wouldn't be surprised if these go the same way. You get in a lot for your money. If you are bag making, you're not going to be using anywhere near this kind of amount. Um, I would recommend that you buy a non-stick foot for your sewing machine. If you're sewing right sides together, you won't need a walking foot or a non-stick foot because you're sewing on cotton, that'll be fine. But if you're top stitching or edge, edge stitching on the laminated side, that may stick to the foot of your sewing machine. Um, so you will need a, a walking foot or a non-stick foot or a roller foot, or if you don't want to buy any feet and you don't have those in stock already, put a little bit of masking tape underneath the bottom of your standard zipper foot, make sure you make a hole in it for the needle to go through, and that can help it stop it slipping as well. Otherwise, if you have some tearaway stabiliser, that could work too. So you stitch over the top of the stabiliser and then rip it away afterwards, so that could work. So you don't have to go out and buy anything special. You don't need a special needle, um, because basically it's just a knitted fabric, then a ballpoint needle will be fine, but the universal needle that you have on your sewing machine already is going to be absolutely fine. Don't go buying yourself a leather needle, you don't need it for these. If you want to put some um, backing on here, so if you've got some fusible fleece or you want to use it with bosal foam, um, iron it from this side. Bosal foam um, likes a lot of steam, you can give it a lot of steam, but normally you'd, you'd put fusibles in on the back of your fabric from the top, your iron from the top, but just make sure you do it from the back. Um, don't pin through it because you could leave holes in it. If you do need to hold the layers together, then you're going to need some wonder clips, which are coming up in the next hour. <laughs> However, if you, so I'm skipping under carrier bags here, if you, um, if you do put a pin in here or if you wanted to hand sew or if you're unpicking stitches even, use a longer stitch. A smaller stitch tends to perforate the PU um, and it can tear, so use a long stitch on your sewing machine. Um, but if you do happen to stick a pin or a needle in there or unpick stitches and you do have holes, then give it a blast of steam from the back and you'll find that the hole just closes over slightly. Here's your wonder clips. These only came back in stock yesterday. And the way that they work... So they're coming up in the next hour, but you can have a look on the website now. If I'm making a bag strap, I've probably got four layers of the PU. But I can clip them together. Got lots of different colours in here, so they're going to stand out against your fabric. They have a flat back to them, so when you are maybe cutting fabric or when there's a going under the sewing machine, it keeps your fabric flat. And then you've got a curved top side, so if you've got a lot of layers of fabric or maybe you're binding, um, it's not going to squish the fabric from the top. Clover, I think, are the best quality. There's lots of looky likeys out there on the marketplace. Um, I find that the clover from all the ones that I've been trying out have been the better quality. They tend to last longer and you've got a really firm grip. I've left an indentation in there. 
that will come out as soon as you blast it with a little bit of steam so don't worry about that so you've got 50 pieces in here all different colours for you for £28.99. Not just for PUs either or on occasions where you can't pin. Laminated fabric is, is difficult to pin because it's so thick. Not this one. Um, but I'll, I'll use these if I'm gluing things together. So maybe the edge of a bag strap that I want to glue in place. I'll just put one of these just to hold it while it's gluing. So those are not just for sewing. So we'll talk about those a little bit more later on. But they're £28.99 for 50 if you want to order them now. Let's just fold this away. Oh, now don't forget as well, we have our rug mats quilt as you go coming up as well. So we've got a couple of those. Oh, and we've got, oh yeah, we've got some big ones, haven't we, as well. Um, with Cara Ackerman. She's not here. We don't have any guests in the studio at the moment for safety reasons. Um, but Cara's been so kind as to make a few films for us. So she's going to be popping up um, virtually in the next hour. We'll have 3D TV one of these days, don't we? Then we won't even need to... Not 3D, holographic. Holographic TV. So instead of having to play in films of other people, we'll actually be appearing in your living room, all in three dimensions. It's going to happen, isn't it? It's bound to happen. Be a bit weird. <laughs> I can come and watch you sewing. What are you doing there? Ooh. I thought you'd gone. Oh, I'm still here. <laughs> That'd be scary. Right, let's take a look at the handmade touch book. This is the kind of book I'd buy. I, it's, there's lots of stylish projects in here. And for um, inspiration, I love all of these colours. I, I could live there. I love that kind of look. It's just so fresh and so modern. This is Big Stitch Quilting. Those are some of the projects. But these are achievable projects, which, which is what I like about them. Um, but we are taken through not just the introduction, but favourite tools. Um, from um, thimbles to markers and hera tools and turning tools. Favourite materials. So these are the materials that the author likes to work with. Um, different kind of techniques from making bag handles to fitting rivets. And then simple projects, achievable projects, projects that a beginner could easily make. She's using a wonder clips look to hold a zip in place before she sews. So purposeful projects, projects that you could gift, projects that won't take you very long to make, and as a beginner, lots of techniques for you to learn, like zip insertion. And as an advanced sewer, maybe you can customise, you can adapt things, you can make them a little bit different. This is going to be a new style of sewing for you. Are you the quilter? Are you the bag maker? Are you the dressmaker? Are you the homemakers in all the curtains and soft furnishings you do? And you want to find something a little bit more, well, a little bit more unusual. I love the way that's been quilted as well. So there's hand sewing as well as machine sewing in here. Scrappy placemats to use up your small pieces of fabric, if you have them. A boxy floor cushion. There's your big stitch quilting as well. A little bit like Sashko, isn't it? Then there are larger items as well, so it's not just all small, quick projects. We've got duvets and quilts in here too. Something for your craft room, so the storage ideas. Little pin cushions. Bags. And then this author obviously has a cat. Because she's made lots of bits and bobs for her as well, including a teepee. So £14.99 is your price for this one. And RRP. It hasn't got an RRP in um, in English, but in dollars it's twenty seven ninety five. Seems like a good saving to me. Um, it's just fourteen pounds and ninety nine pence. U W U U nine seven. Your item code if you'd like to order, or take a look on the website and have a look at the other books. We've still got the early bird for you, cross stitching for your budgie, and um, lots of other items for you on there as well. So that's sewingstreet.com.
and you can take a look at everything that we have for you. Right, keep your messages coming in. It would be lovely to hear from you on Facebook this morning. Let me know what you're up to, what are you doing, what are you doing sewing-wise, what are your plans for the weekend, what are your plans for Easter, because that's coming up very soon as well. Are you going to be sewing for Easter? It would love, be lovely to hear from you this morning. We're going to take a quick break, and we've got lots more coming up for you in about three minutes' time. Hello there, good morning. Welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm Debbie Shaw. Lovely to have your company live this morning. This is the first morning that we've been with you, or will be with you, for three live hours. So we've been here since 8 o'clock this morning and we'll be wrapping up at 11 o'clock. Each show is going to be featuring something different. So uh, in this hour, we're going to be looking at Quilt As You Go. We've got small projects for you. We've got larger projects for you. So there's something for everybody, um, no matter what your skill level is. Now, the first little pieces that we have for you here are the mug mats. We've got two choices for you. So this is the log cabin 
and this is what you're going to be able to make. You'll need your own backing fabric, but basically the way that Quilt As You Go works is that um, the wadding that you're getting is already pre-printed with where you're going to put your fabrics. We'll have a play with this later on. I've got some strips of fabric all ready to go. And you don't need very much fabric for this one. So you've got a four and a half inch square here and the rest of the panels are just made up with two and a half inch strips. So if you've got any of our fabric strips that you've ordered already and you've got some scraps left over, you can use these. You could use jelly rolls or fabric strips that you've already bought, the two and a half inches wide, um, or you can just cut your fabric to those kind of lengths. All of your instructions are on the back so it's not very comprehensive, it's not a difficult procedure and this is the wadding so I'll take this out and show you what you're getting on here. So open this up and it's nice quality wadding as well, it's, um, it's a wool mix, it's not a polyester one and oh gosh right, quite large so You've got three of those all together, so they're all exactly the same. Um, they're all numbered as well, so for instance, number one is going to be, I'll, I'll do this proper later, uh, is going to be a four and a half inch square, and then we've got number two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and then basically when you sew them together, it's almost like a stitch and flip. So this one you're going to adhere um, probably with your June Taylor basting spray. And then the second piece is right sides together. So across here, stitch, flip, and that'll fit perfectly into the size. So you can see how simple this is. It's a great way to introduce somebody into the world of patchwork um, because it's all laid out for you. It's almost like, well, it is patchwork by numbers. You can't go wrong with them. And it's not too time consuming to cut out the pieces because they're all rectangles and squares, so that's quite easy. So that's the first one we have for you, which is log cabin. And next up is the, um, the two and a half inch strip mug mat. So this is just using two and a half inch strips. So maybe it's the Bolly Pops, like, uh, like I'm using, maybe bought those from a previous show. Um, it could be, again, the, the strips that you're buying in the panels that we've had for you previously, or you can just cut your own. So again, you've got three mats in here. No reason why you can't copy it, to be honest, um, with different styles on this one. So one in a row, and then you've got that one, and then you've got that one, almost like a, a chevron kind of look. So the previous one, three log cabins, exactly the same. These are three different designs of your two and a half inch strips. And again, that's £10.99. Should we have a look? Move that out of the way. June Taylor do some very large um, quilts in this same manner as well. So again, if you're just starting, this would be a good kind of introduction, get yourself used to doing them kind of kind of thing. So you've got one, two, three, four of the same size, two of the same size, and two and a half inch strips. If you're buying pre-cuts already, this is what they're going to look like. So literally all you're going to do is cut down to the length that's on your instructions. Couldn't be easier. So this is the second design. So you've got the, the strips across the centre here. You've got six of those, and then the two smaller ones there. Still just using up two and a half inch strips. And then finally here is the one that looks like chevrons. So three different designs, and they're, they're quite sizeable. These aren't coasters, um, so plenty of room for your, for your mug and a plate of uh, rich teas um, for £10.99. I can't, I can't remember the last time I had a biscuit. Not a, not a biscuit fan myself. Hmm. Although I... I I do like a custard cream every now and again, or a, or a jammy dodger, but it's been a while. So, um, hmm. jammy dodgers I'd take apart to eat, but I could only eat the one. Quite sweet, aren't they? Okay, so those are the two different designs, with all of your instructions there as well, and those are £10.99. This is our early bird. 
And these are our early birds. An early bird uh, is uh, the offer that we bring you every day when we can. And it's a reduced price item that we keep the price reduced as long as we have the stock. So if you're here right first thing in the morning, so if you're here at 8 o'clock in the morning, a lot of the time we sell these out by the end of the hour. Um, we do still have some of your early bird uh, cross-stitch books left for you, but the price is ridiculously low. It's only £4.99, but the recommended retail price is £12.99. And these are really easy, simple um, cross-stitch designs that are um, achievable. Something that if you're teaching kids how to sew in these long days we've got at home, they're going to be able to achieve any of these very, very simply. And you don't need an awful lot of anything for them. So you don't have to go out and buy lots of things special. You could do with some Ada, which is a fabric that you're going to sew onto, and some embroidery thread. But there's some very modern designs in here as well. So things that you need to get you started. I'm taking you through to how to cross stitch, so how to do those different stitches. And then understanding charts, and there are charts included as well, or of course you can come up with your own designs too. So we've got bears and log fires and snakes. Some really unusual things for cross stitching. I love the umbrella with the raindrops. You've got a skull with a sword through its head. Nice. Um, borders. You've even got some little coat hangers, so some really unusual little things. Table lamps, TVs, moustaches, you've got a bomb. Little houses. Oh, and a volcano. There's a glass of wine and some brown sauce. Oh, that's one of those game things, isn't it? Controllers. So we've got a pipe and what else is there? Oh, they're like wrestling masks, aren't they? <laughs> my, um, my youngest son used to be heavily into wrestling when he was little. Um, I made him once a Rey Mysterio, full, full, a real full, full size Rey Mysterio, is it the same size as him? He used to chuck it all over the place. <laughs> I bet he doesn't remember that. Um, lots of buttons, probably a good job he doesn't remember that. Um, lots of buttons for you to cover, so again very simple ideas. Um, hair bobbles, hair clips, they could be brooches. But I do like, particularly with kids, if you're going to um, teach them anything, to, to have really quick projects because we don't want them to get bored very quickly. So I've got phone pouches, lots of things to put in hoops so you can make coasters and pictures, mini cushions, pin cushions, samplers. There's an eye mask, pop art, and oh, there's even a watch strap, I never noticed that before. Little bags, decorations, even putting decorations onto your shoes. A handkerchief. So really lovely designs. And then you've got the grid here so you can create your own as well. So that's only £4.99. That's your early bird, as long as we have the stock. Should be £12.99 for that one. Hi, Jackie. She's getting her Debbie Shaw fix. <laughs> You're going to get a Cara fix in a minute. Um, that, that is a Cara Aikman fix. I'm not saying you're going to get your car fixed. It's, it's Cara Aikman. She's actually filmed a demonstration for us and she's, she's been making these bags, um, which are absolutely stunning. So thank you, Cara, for doing those. Um, in fact, should we have a listen and a watch of what Cara is going to be doing? Or should we have a look at what she's doing first? Let's have a look what she's doing. That would help, wouldn't it? Two big bundles for you. So this is the bundle to make the bag that you see here. So all the fabric that you need. Now, if you wanted any of these individually, you can do. So you can have a look on the website and have a look at them on their own. So if you just wanted to buy the lemon fabric, we have the lemon fabric on its own. But this is everything that you need, and I'm sure you're going to have some left over um, to make that huge bag that you saw. So let me just open one of these up and I'll show you what I mean. Um, in fact, you will have enough of these left over. You've got 16 fabric strips here. All of those 
Um, you'll have enough left over to make your matching mug mats as well with those. And just take a look at the colours and the patterns on this one. So this is, it's like a posh paisley. With lovely colours, if you love the, those mustard tones, and I know you do because of the way that mustard faux leather's been selling out so quickly, you're going to love this one. With the deep greys in the background and almost like a modern twist on a classic paisley design. Very feather-like design and the design isn't too large, so again, if you're cutting into this, if you're using smaller pieces like with your mug mats, then it's not going to distort the fabric. So... Lots of small designs, and then we've got the larger, more contemporary monochrome paisleys, and in different colourways. Then you've got the mixture of the two together. That's very pop arty, isn't it? And then this one's quite feathery and floral in the grey, and then again in the mustards and the greys as well. That's only one piece that you're getting in the kit. You could probably make two or three more bags with this, there's so much. So this is the second sheet. Those are fat quarters, but they're bigger than your average fat quarter. Normally a fat quarter would be 18 inches by 22 inches. These are 27 and a half by 19 and a half inches and they coordinate beautifully with the fabric strips because they're all the same kind of design. And these uh, car is used around the top of the bag. So you can use whichever ones you like. And again, you're going to have lots left over. So this is just one half. And then over here is the second half. So Cara's only used this one. She's still got three left over for other projects. So you're getting a lot of leftover fabric from this. So don't just think, oh, £39.99, I can make a bag. You can make a bag plus an apron and a cushion cover and your mug rugs um, and then maybe do a little bit of um, purse making or making things for your sewing room or whatever it is you like because you've got loads of fabric left over. So that's all of that. So those are all of your prints. You could actually use one of those as a lining if you wanted to, but we're giving you lining anyway. And this is your 100% cotton. Half a metre of this one, 112 centimetres wide. So that's included as well. And as well as your panel. So you get a lot for your money here. So there is your pattern. Which, which I really shouldn't open because it's all sealed very nicely. <laughs> so, some different coloured ideas. Obviously, you're going to get the mustard one. Um, works very much in the same way as the mug mats that I showed you earlier on. So, it'll give you the instructions on how to cut out your different size of strips. And these are all strips again. So, you've got your two and a half inch strips here. And Cara's used some of the fat quarters at the top. You're even getting your handbag um, webbing included in there as well. So, you don't have to go out and buy anything else. You've already got your wadding. You've got all of your fabric. You've got all of your, hand your handles. Everything that you need for £39.99. A bag kit, on average, for a bag of this size, will cost you about £40. But look at all of the fabric that you've got left over from this one. You've got way too much just to make that one bag. So I think you've got fantastic value. And in fact, you could actually take a pattern from this and make other tote bags, maybe not using the strips if you wanted to make another bag just out of the remaining three fat quarters that you're getting here. Then, oops, you can do. Right, and in fact, Cara, Cara has returned what she hasn't used, so I can, I can show you later on um, how much fabric you have left. So we've got two colour choices for you. I love this plum. This is beautiful. I shan't open all the way because you get the idea now. But these are your fat quarters. So you've got the, the floral, and then you've got the tiny floral, and then... Inside here, and it's all 100% cotton again. Large flowers, and you've got the ditzy there as well. So that's your fat quarter panel. Remember, those are oversized fat quarters. And then your fabric strips, so there are 16 of those. They're all different. 16 strips in total. 
Then this time we're going to give you some ivory lining. So you've got half a meter of ivory lining. And then you've got the same bag kit. So this isn't quite finished, but this is the kind of look that you're going to have and the size that you're going to have when you piece these pieces together. And again, that's £39.99 for everything that you need. Literally, all you need is your pair of scissors, maybe a rotary cutter ruler, a mat and your sewing machine. And you've got everything else that you need in the kit here. With loads left over. So, I did mention um, Cara's very kindly made a, a video of a demonstration for us. So, let's take a look at what she's been doing. And um, I'm really sorry that I can't join you at Sewing Street and join the team. I hope everybody's staying safe and well and enjoying their stitching. I certainly have been. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted to bring um, the Sophie tote bag to you today. And this is a Quilt As You Go by June Taylor. I've never done it before. And I thought, oh gosh, I'm not really a quilter. You know I'm not a quilter. Um, so it was really, really good to try something that was completely different for me. Um, the instructions are very good. Everything that's included is lovely. And I absolutely love the special panels that Sewing Street have produced for this particular design. Um, so without further ado, this is what hopefully you'll be able to make. Hope you can see it, okay? So this is the Sophie tote bag. Um, it's a quilt as you go, pattern printed on batting, and it's from the June Taylor um, range. Really is very, very straightforward. I've never done one of these before, but I found it very easy to follow and so effective when it was actually completed. And it really is as easy as one, two, three. So they're telling you to select and cut your fabrics. We'll go into that in more detail in a minute. Attach your backing fabric, and then you just sew by number. So it's really, really straightforward. You also have very clear instructions included in the pack. And this includes the cutting guide and tells you um, how many pieces you need to cut and their different sizes. And then this diagram is really, really useful because that reflects the actual printing that's on the batting. And then it goes through all the um, instructions front and back and takes you through the box bottom, the handles, the strap, and also attaching the strap and completing your design. I know, um, the studio will show you the different fabrics. We've looked at the um, beautiful sort of yellowy um, golden colour as well. And this is a, a plum range. And one of the panels is four fat quarters. And this is the four fat quarters that you have here. You can either use that for your lining, but you would have to join two different ones together for your lining. Or you can have the plain fabric as your lining and then you have the stripped fabric, which I've cut down here into the two and a half inch strips. And you can see there's loads of different patterns and everything that you can use. Also included, you've got the um, actual strap itself. So that is really good and that strengthens your strap. And then you've got your batting. And if I can just sort of show you here, I won't be able to show you the whole thing, but again, they'll show you that at the studio. And um, you'll see that there's numbers printed on the batting and that number one there and that will be your first pattern piece that you're going to place followed by number two then number three number four number five etc so when we actually get on to doing a demonstration i'll be able to show you how you assemble the fabric onto the batting okay so we've cut our fabrics we followed the cutting instructions on the um sheet where it tells you how many pieces and the size that you need to cut for each particular section. This now relates to the actual quilt as you go batting, as you can see here, that's all numbered. First thing you do is choose your backing fabric. And for this particular one, I've decided to go for this beautiful ivory color. So you'll cut that to the size of the batting and you'll um, actually be cutting the batting about a half an inch to an inch away from the solid line. And then you'll, um, you can spray it with some fabric spray um, or you can clip it. I just used some clips to hold it together 
and then your machine just inside the solid line all the way around. And this ad attaches the backing, the actual lining fabric to the batting. So once you've done that, it's now time to decide how you're going to do your stripes on the, on the bag. So I've selected eight different colors and I've tried to alternate between the light color and the dark color. So now's the time to actually lay it out on your fabric and decide where you're going to put the different stripes. Obviously, the first one you do is number one, which is slightly wider, and I'll explain the reasons why that is. So we pop that there, and I quite like the light colour for that particular stripe. And then you will just lay your fabrics out, and I've, I've gone for sort of alternate light and dark. So you can see how that comes together. If you don't like the um, the way that you've done it, then you can obviously change it. So that's quite a nice collection there. This fabric is so, so nice. So then we've got the dark shade, and then another light shade, and then another dark one. If you don't like that layout, you can play around with it. You can move things around. Um, so, you know, this is the time. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, right, there's actually three quite similar fabrics there. So what I might do is take that one out and swap it with that one. That balances it a little bit more. So those are your stripes that you're going to be stitching first. Then we have the side panels. I quite like the dark fabric for the side panels. So that would go there. That one would go there. There's actually four of those because you've got the other side of the bag as well. And then the final one, um, so we've done all of that. Let's just lay that back, move that down. Is deciding for the horizontal stripes. So I've gone for quite a light color on the horizontal stripes there, um, which I think is quite nice. And then you can choose from your fat quarters which fabric you fancy for the top of the bag. I think I'd go with one of the darker ones, so maybe something like that. But again, it's at this stage that you can actually play around with the colours and the layout and everything. OK, so now we're ready. Now we've decided on the actual fabrics and everything. So this will be your first stripe. And then this will be your second stripe. OK. You match them up to the solid line at the top there. You can see that solid line at the top there. And then you will actually right sides together. So this is your second panel. You'll turn that over, matching the solid line on the batting with the raw edge of those two pieces. And what we'll do is we'll actually stitch on the machine a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And this is the process that you use. Once you've stitched that one, you'll fold, fold that one back, finger press it rather than actually use the iron. If you use an iron at this stage, you're going to flat, flatten the batting. Then the third panel, the third color, again, we wanted a dark one. So we'll match that to the top and that will go the other side of panel number one. And again, your machine all the way down there and then fold it back. And you continue with that following the numbers. So we've gone one in the center, number two, number three, then you'll come over to number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, then the side ones as well, number nine there. So you continue in that way, exactly the same as that. So it's really, really simple to follow. And as you'll see in the next sort of shot that we've done, although it's a yellow bag, you'll see exactly how the panels come together. So here we have the yellow bag. We've done all the stripes here. We've added the um, horizontal strip there and also the larger part at the top. And we've also got it all lined done the side seams, we've done the box bottom. 
So it's all ready to get finished. So now the next part, which is the binding at the top. Now, what you'll do is you'll actually um, cut the binding, just a straight binding, but I do like to do a diagonal join. And the reason for that is when you're folding this over, you can see with a diagonal join, when you're folding that over, you only have two parts there and two parts there. Whereas if you just did a straight seam, you'd actually have the four parts or four pieces of fabric all together. So it makes it quite bulky. So what I've done is from the spare fabric, and there's loads of spare fa fabric, I've cut some strips and then done the bias seam there. And you make a long, long strip of that. You'll fold it in half. And as I say, it's nice and it's not bulky or anything like that. The next thing is to actually clip it onto the raw edge of the bag and you're doing it right sides together and the raw edges together. So we'll do that with some clips. These are wonderful, these wonder clips for just holding it in position. And it's so easy to do this. And also it means that if you um, don't like the way that the actual pattern, you'll see I've used lots of different um, patterns of the fabric there. If you don't like the way that that works, it's very, very easy to turn it over and um, redo it. So we'll just pop that over like that and come all the way around. And then I'm going to show you a really, really good way of joining the binding. So we'll do it all the way around like this. So to get a nice, smooth binding, I've used a two and a half inch strip of fabric. I'm just going to move that one over. Used a two and a half inch strip of fabric. And um, what you want to do is you measure your half of the two and a half inch strip. And obviously that's going to be one and a quarter. And you'll decide where you want the join to be. If you look at it now, I've actually got a diagonal join there to make sure that the join was not very close to a previous join. So what I decided was to move my join a little bit further over. And I decided that a good place to join would be about there. And what I've done is I've popped a pin in position there and then I cut the excess fabric back. So I measured one and a quarter inches there, one and a quarter inches there, and that's where the two join. OK, I haven't actually machined any of this yet. I'm going to take it all and machine it when I get upstairs and, and get to the sewing machine. So um, what you can do is if you wanted to, you could machine and um, you can machine all of that before you do the join. It's entirely up to you. There's not a lot of difference between the two. So now we want to do right sides together and this is where it gets a bit fiddly and I apologise now, I may get it wrong, but you want to actually join the two pieces of fabric together and I'm going to prop a couple of pins in just roughly just to um, show where the actual join could be and um, I'm going to show you and if it doesn't work then you'll learn from it and I'll learn from it. So we could put the pins going from that diagonal across. I like to leave a little bit extra fabric. So I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in just to be sure that I've got that join in the right direction. So I've gone over the diagonal, so from one side to one side, and that will show you that your join will be like that, and that's your join when it's stitched. And as you can see, I did actually get it right. Your diagonal is going in the same direction as the other diagonals. So as I say, just pin that. And also once you've pinned it, just lay it on your fabric just to be sure that you've got the right amount of fabric and everything. So now I'm going to take this up and machine it. And then I'll machine all the way around and um, we'll turn that over. And you can either hand or machine stitch that to the inside. Um, but I will show you that later after I've shown you about the handles. Okay, now we come to the actual straps. These are fun. Um, we're following the instructions here. and They take you through very, very quickly and carefully exactly what you need to do. Um, so your first thing is you cut your fabric to the length that they say. And you have two pieces of fabric. One is two and a two and a half inch wide. The other one is two inch wide. You also cut the batting and um, the quilt as you go batting 
and cut the lengths. Those are actually printed onto the batting, so that's very easy to do. So I've got my two and a half inch one there with the batting, and then I've also got the webbing that's included in the kit, and then my two inch strips there. What you'll do is you'll fold over at each end a half inch and just press that or finger press it both ends so you have that you'll notice that the strap you can't see it properly here but if i do it like that you can see that the actual um webbing is shorter and also the batting is shorter than the actual fabric don't worry about that because you actually are going to be machining the straps onto the outside of the bag and what you don't want is a huge amount of thickness so these are shorter so don't worry and think that you've cut them wrong or that there's a printing error on the instructions that is it correct because you want to be able to attach the straps without um, a lot of thickness so you'll be doing on both of these now you can either use a glue pen or some quilting tape i didn't have these here so I wanted to show you that it was quite easy and you'll be folding the fabric over. Now they say the fabric will meet. It's actually just overlaps slightly. So you fold that fabric over and press. So you will do that first on both of them. So you do that for the, um, the webbing and also on the batting. So do exactly the same. These ones actually meet in the center and you'll do that and press. And as I say, if you've got some quilting tape or some um, fabric glue that's really good as well so it will hold it in position when you're actually um, attaching both of them so once you've done that you press it and you end up with two strips like this so one where the fabric is meeting in the center and the other one where it slightly overlaps and what you'll do then is you'll take the narrow one and roll sides together so that's where the actual join is you'll place that over the other strap and you can see that there's um, some of the fabric shown which is really really nice and you'll pin that on top of each other and machine the two together you'll machine down one side there and the other side there and that will make a really nice firm strap and then I'll take you on to actually attaching the strap to the bag so we've now attached the binding to the top of the actual bag you can see that um, we've machined it over and in fact I've just machined the back of it this can be hand stitched if you like um, but I found that it was quite nice and neat and tidy and um, you'll see that I've done a top stitch here to just finish it off completely and you can see that you can't really notice the seams very much which is brilliant so that's what I wanted to achieve and um, you have obviously all the quilting on the inside of the bag and we're ready to attach the handles um, so I have one of the handles here so this is it completed so we folded and then we um, laid the narrow one on top of the uh, wider one and then top stitched along the edge there and you remember there was a gap at the end and there wasn't any of the um, the actual batting or the cord um, on the inside so that's really where we're going to be able to stitch to attach the handle what you do is you'll mark either side five inches so just I've done it with a fission pen so when this is ironed that will disappear but five inches from the outer seam inwards and then you'll lay your handle on and match that to the edge of where that mark is so that's five inches from the edge and right sides together so that's the right sides of your handle together you'll machine it along there so I'll just clip this one just try and make sure you don't twist your handle that's very very easy to happen I'm sure a lot of people have done that um, before so if you clip that there you can check if your handles in the right position and as I say, your machine along there to attach it um, to that side and then fold this over about an inch or so. And you can then, what I've done is actually machined down and across and up 
and then across again. So I've made a square and I think that's really, really good because this is going to take all the weight of whatever you put in the bag. So it strengthens it. So as I say, I've top stitched down there, across there and across there. So if I whip, just whip this over, you can see the handles that I've attached on this side and you'll be able to see the stitching that I've done. So I've tried to um, match the stitching to the stitching that's already there. And this is nice and strong and that completes your bag. It's wonderful, it's so big. So there's loads and loads of room for whatever you fancy putting in there. I think I'll put some of my sewing things. So thank you very much for staying with me and learning a little bit about Quilt As You Go. Um, hopefully you've learned how to make this beautiful tote bag, learned how to do your box bottoms there, um, and I hope you've really enjoyed it. Um, I hope to see you again soon. Stay safe, say, stay well, and until next time, bye-bye. Bye, Cara, and thank you so much for bringing us that video. Um, this is hopefully going to be the way forward over the next few weeks as we don't have any guests or demonstrators in the studio at the moment for safety reasons. So Cara very kindly made that video from home for us, so thank you. I did say we would we'd, uh, we'd show you how much fabric she had left over from that bag, though. So remember, the whole kit is £39.99, and this is Cara's scraps. So we've got all of these strips left over which is very kindly cut out so I can use those on another project without having to cut them so that all of those left plenty enough to make probably 10 or 20 of the the mug mats so all of that's left she didn't use all of the lining because remember you're getting half a meter in total so this is leftover fabric and then this is leftover fabric and this is leftover fabric so there is three full fat quarters, which is all left over from the kit. So you see what I mean? That um, if, you, uh, if you normally buy a kit, you get in enough in the kit to make whatever it is. So whether it's a cushion cover or a bag or a quilt or anything. But to have so much left over. So you've got enough to make a matching purse. You've got enough to make a matching satchel or a rucksack or any other patterns that you have. And this is 100% cotton. It's a nice thick cotton as well. So, um, but remember with the kit, you're getting wadding in there too. So you don't need to go out and buy anything extra. This is all extra that's been left over for you. There's so much. See, I wouldn't have given it back if I was car. I'd have kept all of them. <laughs> so plenty. Um, so this one is the Paisley Marmalade. You can tell by the, those gorgeous tangerine kind of colors. Look at this all left over. I'm, I'm, not, fold <laughs> I'm not folding those neatly. So I'll, um, yeah, yours, yours will be in one piece. This isn't what we're sending you. This is what we're sending you. That's um, coming home with me. So these are the four fat quarters and they're very large fat quarters indeed. So normally a fat quarter would be about um, 22 inches by 18 inches. These are 27 and a half by 19 and a half inches and there are four of them on the set there as well. Um, it was a different design but my daughter actually made an apron out of one of those panels so without actually cutting it up. So the top was kind of like that and the white bit was going around the waist and then there was enough here to make ties to go around the neck as well. So there's lots that you can make with them and there's lots with what you can make with your leftovers as well. So that's included. Just one needed for the bag so you've got three full size fat quarters left over from that one. There's your lining fabric, that's half a metre as well. And then you've got 16 of the fabric strips and those are all different. And you've got your kit as well. And, and remember, this is the one with the, um, all of the panels pre-printed -pre on there. So uh, it's quilt as you go. So it's a very, very simple technique, as you just saw with Cara. And your handles are even included as well. So you've got a, a, the complete kit there for £39.99. So even if you're not a quilter, you become a quilter as soon as you start quilting as you're going. Um, because who would know that you're literally quilting by numbers with this one? Because you can't see any of the numbers after this, obviously. So it's a great way to start sewing, to start quilting. 
and look at what you can actually make with it. Look at the size of this bag, how useful is that? So it's nice and strong and sturdy and stylish, but achievable for anybody with this one. There we go. Two messages this morning, and we're not up at eight o'clock in the morning. We're live from eight o'clock in the morning. That's early. Eight o'clock in the morning is not early. Four o'clock in the morning is early to get up, isn't it? Um, well, it is for me. Um, don't forget we have an early bird as well, which is now eight o'clock in the morning. We're going to be bringing you an early bird. This is the early bird from this morning. We do still have some left. And basically, we bring you a product at a reduced price. So this should be £12.99. Your price today, or while we have the stock, is £4.99. pence. So in here you've got, I'll just have a quick flick through because we've seen it quite a few times, simple cross stitch designs whether you're uh, refashioning things that you already have, accessorising shoes, jackets, if you're making things from scratch there are some very achievable smaller projects in here so it could be um, making things for your home, for pin cushions, cushion covers, to watch straps, buttons, just small pictures, small images, maybe you can put some of these in a hoop and make little wall hangings out of them, you can cover buttons and clips and, um, and hair accessories. All of these pet templates are included and there are some plain graphs on the back so you can make up your own as well. And it's only £4.99. Great for somebody who wants to start cross-stitching. Maybe that's going to be your, your new craft and particularly if you don't own a sewing machine because of course most of the projects you're not going to need it anyway. Um, so you've seen the, um, the paisley marmalade. This has been your favourite out of the two. So this is the paisley plum. So again, four fat quarters. So just the same kind of size in four different designs. As you see there, try to open it all out again. And then you have your fabric strips, which isn't available on its own now, that's sold out. The other panels are available on their own if you wanted to, including the, um, the Paisley Marmalade one. So 16 different coloured, uh, different printed, prints of strips all in the plum colour. This time you have a cream coloured lining and there's half a metre of that, 112 wide. And then you've got the same bag pattern there as well. Now Cara had started making up the plum version. So this is as far as she got here. So I can just show you again what is actually left over. So it's not just a kit to make this bag, although it is a kit obviously to make this bag. There's also all of this left. Now that's the handles which um, she hadn't made up, so those are going to be included in the bag. But these are the leftovers. That's the amount of fabric strips you have left over. If you were to buy a set of fabric strips, you're probably going to be paying about £12 for that lot. You have all of this lining left over. So I reckon there's about, I don't know, three or four pounds there. And then you've got scraps and three full fat quarters left over as well. So probably what you've got left over amounts to half of the price that you're paying for the complete kit. I haven't worked that out exactly, but that kind of makes sense to me. Um, now the fabric stripped panel, fabric strips panel is available on its own. Let me open this out and show you. And these are really big. They are two and a half inches wide, so a regular size for your fabric strips, but they're longer than you would expect um, when you're buying fabric strips. So let me do, if I do it that way, you can see all of the different, all of those 16, can't you? So they're all different, but they all coordinate really well. Um, as Cara was saying in a demonstration, you can kind of arrange these so that you get a dot next to a light, or you can create like a, an ombre so they go from the very pale through to the very dark. So it's up to you how you arrange them together. But I love the colour. I think it's so stylish. I think it's a very elegant colour. But we're down to single figures for those now. That's just for the strips on their own for £19.99. Right. If you'd like to order anything, remember we, we have a website, which is sewingstreet.com. And as you have a look on the website, there's going to be an awful lot more on there than we're just showing you here too. So if you wanted to stock up on anything, um, or if you want to have a look at the selection of sewing machines that we have available for you, we've got the um, Elna 570 coming up in the next hour. But get ahead of the game, as you do, and shop on the website, then you don't have to hang around and wait for us. It's all there. 
So sewingstreet.com is our website or you can order on 0800 001 4433. If you have any questions or requests, come and bring them on this morning on our Facebook page, which is um, Sewing Street TV. Go to the visitor post page and send me a message. Let me know what you're up to. What are you sewing? What would you like to? Have you bought the fabric strips already? What have you made with them? So it would be lovely to have your company. Now I've got the marmalade fabric strips for you as well, marmalade paisley. I think these have a quite a, um, a feather-like design to them, or almost like, um, like a zentangle. Mm, let me just bring that forward a little bit, there you go. And I love the colours on these. They're very of the moment, shall we say, with all of the, the mustard colours and the greys. Very fine prints as well. So, oh, do you know what? I was just thinking, if you got the PU earlier on, what could you do? You could incorporate some of the strips with the PU fabric. I wouldn't recommend that with any kind of laminate, um, but with our laminated fabric, with the faux leather, it is so soft, you could mix them together. And then may maybe make the bag handles out of that as well. And then you could maybe co cover some buttons and decorate with those too. Oops. Right, how did that go? It's a huge sheet of fabric, all printed in the UK and 100% um, cotton as well. And it's quite a heavy weight as well. Paisley marmalade, we have fat quarters on their own too. So we don't have them in the plum colour, but we do have them here. So let me just open that up again. Four huge fat quarters for you there. 70 by 50 millimetres or 27 and a half by 19 and a half inches. I'm thinking cushion covers, um, maybe table settings. Are you going to chop them up and sew them back together again, do a bit of a quilting with them? But I think it's a nice quality of fabric for home wares as well. So it could be placemats and table runners and the like. Or maybe you're making things for your sewing room. Is it going to be storage boxes and bags that you hang on the back of your... Um, on the back of your door to store things in. It's nice to have a coordinated room, isn't it? So again, £14.99. Sold out of the plum, but we do still have the, the Paisley Marmalade available for you. So, right, we've also got the June Taylor Cut and Press. This is a really handy board. On this side, you have a padded side, which you can iron on, but you can also pin into, um, which is really useful when you're piecing. Um, so you've got the 45 degree angles and you've got these circular marks here as well, and it's inches around the edge. And on the other side, this is your cutting mat, and this is 18 inches by 12 inches in size, so you've got an A3 size. You've even got measurements around the handle there as well, look. Um, so it's easy to store, but it's such a useful mat. And because it's padded on the back here, I'm thinking if you're sitting down and crafting, that would make a nice place mat, wouldn't it? So it's comfortable on your knee and it's somewhere where you can sit and craft. So not necessarily just for, for cutting and measuring, but for actually using as a table as well. It's £49.99. The handle means not just that you can carry it, you can hang it up if you wanted to as well to keep it out of the way. Um, not all of us have a lot of space, do we, for sewing, so it's nice to have things that are easy to store as well. And then that's £14.99. Fabulous. Love the colour there as well. Now, basting spray is such an important part, certainly, of, of my sewing kit. Um, because, now June Taylor um, basting spray is really difficult to get hold of actually, so we're very lucky to be able to have got this for you. Um, a basting spray will help you to secure layers of fabric together without the need for tacking and pinning. So if you're quilting, you could actually use basting spray instead of your safety pins to, or, or tacking to hold the whole quilt together while you're quilting it. And a basting spray for fabric has been designed so that it's not going to gunk up your sewing machine. Um, so it's designed for use 
with sewers and it means that it's easy to hand sew through as well. Um, so whether it's layers that you're using for um, quilting, maybe you've got some interfacing that you want to put on um, the, the back of your fabric when you're bag making. If you have interfacing you want to use with any of the PUFO leathers, then you could use this instead of ironing on the back. Um, or if you have some kind of fusible, or a fleece or a foam that isn't fusible, then it becomes fusible with a basting spray. But with a basting spray, unlike with an adhesive, you can take this off and put it back again. So for things like applique, you can actually put your applique down. If you don't like the look of the position that it's in, you can peel it off and then you can put it back down again without it spoiling any of your work as well. So it's really, it gets a lot better as well. Just trying to see how much is in this. We've got a, a rather large can, 284 grams in total. Now she's saying it's a quilt basting spray, it's a fabric basting spray because not everybody's a quilter but we do all use a basting spray at some point and at £12.49 you've got a great value price point there as well. Um, oh now then the bag bundles really quickly we are now down to single figures in both of them whether you're going to go for the plum option or you're going to go for the um, paisley marmalade option less than 10 of each of those remaining. So if you're ordering on the website, can you check out your baskets, please? If you're on sewingstreet.com, just go all the way through to check out. Don't worry about your postage. Remember, if you order anything else throughout the day, so if you check out your baskets here now so that you know that you've got yours in the bag, sorry about the pun, um, and then come back later and think, actually, I want to try that basting spray. We won't charge you any extra postage if you order anything else before midnight tonight. So just make sure you get hold of your bags and then come back and have a shop around and order whatever else you like. Our wonder clips are back in stock again. They sell out so quickly, not surprised. They're really useful. These are Clover Wonder Clips. I think they are the best quality. There are many imitations out there. I still like my Clovers because they've got a really strong spring. They're, they're just really, really well made. And I think they need to have a really strong spring because you're going to be clipping thick fabrics with these. Not necessarily thick fabrics. I think they really help if you're sewing through um, layers of denim or canvas or certainly fabrics that you can't pin like um, laminated fabrics or even the PUs. It helps to hold them in place. My daughter does a lot of dressmaking and she uses these instead of pins wherever she can because they're just so much easier. And they don't stick in your feet when you drop them on the floor. Um, so they're a lot easier to find than pins in that respect as well. £28.99 brings you 50 pieces all in their own little box all different colors so they stand out against any kind or any color of fabric that you're using there no messages from you what you like right let's have a look at our quilt as you go log cabin mug rugs i was going to make one up wasn't i may well still do so you don't get the fabric um, this is a really easy introduction into quilt as you go because the pattern is already printed onto your wadding but these are smaller sizes so they're not challenging pieces at all so if I just open up the wadding here and this is a nice natural wool wadding so they haven't scrimped and just put a polyester in there it's a really nice quality oh no that's not the log cabin sorry this one's the log cabin got them mixed up this one's log cabin so you've got three um, mats which are all the same and you can see they're quite sizable as well so all you're going to do is to put your first square down here this is where you're going to use your basting spray so spray the back of that plonk it down spray in a well vented area please and then your second piece you can see how this four and a half inch square overlaps the line so your second piece is going to go over the top of there right sides together and then you're going to sew along the line so you've got your quarter of an inch seam allowance there and then flip this back and that will sit up against the next line here obviously you're going to sew in a straighter line than unfolding it and then number three you do the same here so sew over flick back number four down there flick it over number five down there flip it over and number six face down there and flip it over now you will need backing fabric for these but of course you don't need the wadding 
and you don't actually need very much backing fabric either. Um, but these could be blocks. You know, you, you don't have to use them as the, the mug mat if you don't want to. You can use them for whatever you like. So three of those, uh, so the wadding and your instructions are included for your £10.99. You don't get your fabric. That's mine. Well, it's not mine, I just found it under the counter. But I'm kind of thinking if nobody else wants it, I might as well have it. We also have for you the two and a half inch fabric strip and these are three different ones but they're all using two and a half inch strips so all you need to do is to measure the length so the first one here is really simple um, so let me show you the instructions because these, these are really easy as well so you're going to cut cut two uh, two and a half inch strips by the following dimensions so pieces one to four uh, there are four and a half and pieces five to seven are eight and a half. So these four pieces measure four and a half inches long. These three pieces measure eight and a half inches long. And then you'll piece them together in just the same way as previous, as I showed you. So one there, flip it over, flip it over. And then the second one is a different design, as you see here. So this is the Twisted Strips mug mat. That one's rail fence. This is Twisted Strips. And you need one to five, which are the ones down the centre, are um, five and a quarter, all by two and a half inches wide. And then you've got the smaller pieces on the side there as well. And then your final one here is the braided strips mug mat, which is that one. And again, you've got all of your dimensions there as well. It also shows you how to do your, um, your backing self binding. So basically you'll cut your backing fabric larger, it gives you all the dimensions, larger than the mat and then you fold over the backing over the front of your mug, um, of your mug mat and that, that looks like bias binding but it's actually the backing, it's kind of grown on from the back. So £10.99 is your price there. So, oh, now then, did you see yesterday um, John brought you some cotton canvases? So have a look on the website for those. Those were really, really popular. So they were 150 centimetres wide. Um, great, great for bag making. Um, so again, there's far more on the website than... Um, I can't remember which bags those go in, never mind. I'm sure we'll figure it out later on. <laughs> yes, one, one of our many staff, I'm sure we'll sort that out later on. <laughs> um, I had a message from Jane. Hi, Jane. Morning. Thank you for cheering my morning up. Oh, thank you. And thank you for making the effort to be here. It's an absolute pleasure, Jane. It's really nice to be here. She says we make things look really easy. Well, we, we try to. We try to encourage as many people as we can to start sewing. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. It's so, it's so lovely to have your messages. Um, and it is, and I think we're really lucky to be here, to be honest. So many places are closing down at the moment and, uh, and we're still going and we're going to try and keep going for as long as we possibly can. But we are behaving and we are going by the rules. So there's only two of us. In fact, there's three of us in the building because we have a cl cleaner here who seems to be here 24 hours a day. She sews, actually. Gonna have to bring her in sometime. She was in the studio um, the other morning, two meters away from me, and um, she says, she's, she's new. And she says, do, do you sew? I said, yeah, we do sewing every morning at Sewing Street. And she says, oh, I, do, I like dressmaking, I like quilting, I like. So I said, oh, oh, let's have your number then. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a nice little team. And um, so there's just me and Joe, who is producing, uh, no, who is directing. Hannah's producing, but she's producing from home. Um, and the rest of the team are all working from home as well. So we are, we are being very careful and we are sticking to the two metres apart rule and, and, and the warehouse as well, actually, doing the same. Um, oh, right, now then, the frozen fabric has been very popular. That was from the previous hour. So should we have a quick flick through? So to start with, we had the white. And there's half a metre, I'm not going to open all the way because I think we know what half a metre looks like now. So we have Olaf, Elsa and Anya and snowflakes. So this is uh, frozen, the whole range is called frozen alpine, this is Wonder White. And again it's £6.99, PSUQ10 is your code for this one. They all, they'll mix and match together really well as well. 
I'd love to know what you're going to make. Who's it for? You're thinking Christmas presents already. And was it, I think it was this one next, wasn't it? So there we go. This is one that I thought looked quite Scandinavian. It's almost got a, um, a tapestry kind of look to it. So this is Elsa. Again, £6.99 for half a metre. These are by the half metre, so if you bought two, you'll have a whole metre in length. So you can make some quite large items out of these. Mm -hmm. Have I got to go a bit quicker now? Um, the patchwork one has been one of your favourites. I like this one as well, actually. I can see a lot of opportunity for applique with this one. If you use it all in one sheet, they're non-directional, so it'll make nice little quilts. In fact, if you just put this on the back of some wadding, on the top of some wadding, and quilt it around the edge of the squares so it looks like um, stitch in the ditch, it'll look like you put the whole thing together like a patchwork quilt. That's going to be a quick and easy project. Again, that's £6.99, any UQ76, your item number. Then, oh, I can't remember what order they were coming in. I was doing so well. Was it Olaf? Oh, I'm going Olaf anyway. There you go. This is the one that I thought would make quite nice borders. I think uh, quite nice deep borders as well. Um, because Olaf doesn't overlap himself, you could actually cut, cut out a really wide border and maybe put round, that around the bottom of um, a, a little boy's shirt or a, a, a skirt or a blind in the bedroom or something like that. Um, and again, £6.99 brings you half a metre in total. So you're just looking at half of the half metre at the moment there. You get twice the amount. So it's funny though, isn't it? He's got a lovely little face. Comes to pieces from what I can remember and then puts himself back together again. And um, the background has one of those tapestry kinds of look to it as well. But these are all little sleighs. This is like cross stitch. So it's a really nice design. For £6.99. Then we're moving on to... Let's do... Let's do this one. Which is the light blue? And it says, season to celebrate. And again, it's another non-directional print, which you could cut out and use as individual applique if you so wished. And again, £6.99, JFU Q56 is your item number. One more from this collection, which is... Both of the girls, both of the girls and Olaf again. Odif, Olaf. Olaf. What do I call him Odif? I've called him Olfa, that's cutting mats. I've called him Odif, that's your 505 sprays. <laughs> it's nice that, you know, Disney have actually related snowmen in cartoons to sewing products, isn't it? <laughs> I've got a head full of thread. Um, this again, six pounds and ninety-nine pence for your half meter. <laughs> Never expected it. it; wasn't a plan at all to um, end up in this world of sewing. I was going to be a bus conductress, me. Mm. And then when when it, when I when I was past ten years old, I was going to be a policewoman. Sat me exams and everything. Ended up working in a bank. This is the, um, the frosty leaves. So these coordinate beautifully with your, um, with your frozen range. Frosty foliage. And you can just see the shimmer of the silver foiling on there. It does look like frost. That's only £3.99. And then finally, we have the silver option. And both of those go really well with any of the fabrics that you're going for from the Frozen collection. That's again £3.99. Right, so we've got another hour coming up, because remember this is the first day that we are three hours live. So coming up in the next hour we're going to be featuring the, um, the 570 Elna sewing machine, which is one of my favourites. And we've got some new bits and bobs for you coming up as well. So do stay with us if you can, and we'll see you again in about three minutes.
Hello, good morning and welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm Debbie Shaw and this is our final live hour. Three live hours every single day as from this morning. So 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Now today we're going to be featuring sewing machines. We've got some new sets of needles for you. Um, we've got uh, some tools to make your life a little bit easier. So we've got quite a lot going on here. Um, but we're going to start off with needles. You can't sew without them. But needles are really important to buy the specific needle for the project that you're making. For the majority of your projects you're going to use a universal needle which will probably be the needle that came on your sewing machine when you first bought it and those are probably going to be the spare needles that are in your machine as well but if you're sewing with specialist fabric so if it's stretch fabric um, shiny fabrics um, very thick fabrics leather fabrics all of those kind of thing you'll have a much better stitch if you're using the right needle for the job the right needle can help to stop your fab or your stitches from puckering it can help to keep your fabric flat and it can help the thread whatever thread you're using to travel through the needle a lot easier as well so you will get a much nicer stitch line so we've got three new needles for you today uh, which come from a Janome. so these are they um, and these colours are specific to Janome. So a, a lot of the time with needles, you'll find that maybe the blue tip ones are going to be for denim. It's a little bit different with Janome. So these have been brought out specifically um, for the projects that they have in mind. So let's take a look at these super stretch to start with. A stretch needle has a specific tip on it which helps to prevent cutting through any kind of elastane or knitted fibres. Um, and again, you'll, you'll get a better stitch when you're using the right needle for the job. So these are just £5.50 for all of them. And they do come in assorted sizes um, from 11 and 14. So your Imperial is 11 and 14, your um, American um, or metric is 75.90 so that's what the different sizes of needles mean and it does say on the back here there's kind of a description of all of the different things that these are used for so if you're sewing um, sportswear, swimwear, jersey fabrics then do buy the right needle for the job because you're going to get a much better job made from it and I would say Change your needle after every large project. If you're not doing a lot of stretch fabrics, then change it back to your universal before you move on to a woven fabric again. Um, but in general, it's important to change your needle after every large sewing project. So if you're sewing all day, change every day. If you're only doing a little bit of sewing, maybe change it once a week. And that's no matter what kind of needle that you're going for. You will see a difference when you change your needle. It's like when you, um, when you clean your machine or you get the lint out. So you take the, um, the throat plate out and just have a, a brush around inside. You'll find that your stitches are smoother and your machine will sound better when it's had a bit of a clean. Same for your needles. So keep, keep a lot of needles in stock. You're always going to break one one day anyhow, aren't you? So then we move on to the blue tipped needle. This is another one of the new genomes. And these have been especially designed with a long shank. So the needle sits slightly lower on your machine than it would do normally. So it's got a long scarf, which is the bit at the back of where the thread goes through the needle. Um, so these have been designed specifically for synthetics or any kind of problem fabric, if you like. But maybe you've got some, um, some polyesters or polycotton mixes or very shiny fabrics or slippery fabrics and you find your stitches aren't running perfectly. Don't adjust your tension. It's very rarely your tension's fault and that tends to be the first thing we go for. Try changing your needle. So again, you've got your five different, uh, your different sizes in here as well. There's 75 11s. Um, for five pounds and fifty pence, KAWQ twelve is your item number there. And then another one of the new variety of needles that Janome have brought you. <clears throat> so I can tell I'm not used to talking for three hours. And these are the purple tip needles. And these have been specifically designed to prevent skip stitches with heavy fabrics. So unlike a denim needle, which is really strong, so if you're sewing through denim and lots of layers of fabric or canvases and really heavy fabrics, the strong needle is advised. Um, it's the shape of these needles that makes it a little bit different for heavier fabrics, including knits, and particularly if you're embroidering. Um, so if you're embroidering denim maybe, or you can embroider on some of the PU fabrics, um, you may find it easier to use this needle. If you're embroidering, then you're going to find that you're sewing over and over the same spot in several times. So this is going to help the thread go through the fabrics in a smoother manner and give you a better stitch. Those are £5.50, NDWQ73. 
I tend to have a, well I do have a, a box full of needles and I've got, oh, metallic needles, top thread needles, quilting needle, and any kind of needle that I see, maybe needles that I haven't got, these are going to be going in my shopping basket, as my just in cases. Because if, if you don't have the right needle for the job, rarely do you think, well I shan't do that job until I've ordered the right needle. You make do, and when you make do, you're going to get second best. So it's, it's always nice, I think, to have all of those needles in stock already so that when that job does come up and you say, oh, I, I, I wish I'd have bought those purple tip needles because I'm sewing, you know, I'm broadering through denim, um, you know that you've already got them. There's no shelf life, they don't go off. So you can stop, stock up as many of those as you like. Now you're not going to get rusty needles and you don't use them. <laughs> Let's have a look at our sewing machines. So we have three machines for you. Let me just check any mess. Not many people are talking to me this morning. Let me, oh, 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 okay. I'm on um, Sewing Street TV on Facebook on the visitor posts. Um, you can message in there as well. Oh, I don't know where that is. Um, you can message in as well. And the messages will get passed on to me. So if you, if you don't come directly through to what I have open, then we'll find you. OK, we have three sewing machines for you. Two of them I don't want you to buy. This is the Elna uh, 550. It's a very nice machine. It's got 50 stitches and they're all on the plate at the side here. So you've got utility stitches, you've got your stretch stitches, you have a whole selection of feet that come with the machine and we've got uh, stretch stitches, there's blind hem stitches, we've got some decorative stitches on here as well. So 50 stitches in total. You don't need to use the, um, the foot control because it's got a start button and a speed control here as well. Your main stitches you can choose here, so the ones that you're going to use most often, you just press a button. It's got a needle up, needle down position and a lock stitch and it's got a presser foot pressure dial. So it is feature packed. It even comes with an extension table and it's £479, which is a great price. Only £3.95 delivery, don't buy it. It's a very nice machine, but this one is nicer. So here, this is the 560. So, don't buy it, don't buy it. It's got more features. So this time we've got a thread snipper, you've still got your start start button, needle up down position and your lock stitch and your presser foot pressure dial, automatic needle threader, start stop button there, your extension table is included and this time we have twice as many stitches. So instead of your 50 stitches you now have 100 stitches for £519. Don't buy it. Because, remember that's 100 stitches. And a thread snipper. Just, oh, and it comes with free fabric as well. Two metres. But don't buy it. Because this is the 570. So the 550 has 50 stitches. The 560 has 100 stitches. This machine has 380 stitches. It's still got the start stop button, the speed control, the lock stitch, the reverse stitch, the needle up down and the scissors. But this time we have a memory. We have the alphabet so you can start monogramming and, and piecing together different stitches. We have all of, well, we have 200 stitches at the side here. All of the alphabet stitches are actually in the instruction book because there's not enough room on the machine to put any more of these cards in place. You have more decorative stitches on this machine um, than on the others. So if you love to embellish and embroider, you've got a whole array of them here and there's lots of different techniques for um, stitching in the ditch, for uh, giving an heirloom hand stitch kind of looks, for stitching with different types of fabric, whether it's stretch fabric, heavier weights of fabric, buttonholes on different types of fabrics. And then, of course, you do have the alphabet in uppercase and lowercase in two fonts with all the punctuations on the machine as well. So it's £569. There are so many more features on this machine than on the other two machines, which is why I'd like you to go for this one instead. It comes with an extension table. So this is your accessory compartment, which simply slides away. Make yourself a sewing machine, Matt, when you get it home. And then your extension table simply goes on here like so 
and it also has a hard cover obviously not with the extension table on there but a lot of the times even the most expensive sewing machines can come with a flimsy plastic cover which is which is cheap this is solid so that's going to keep the dust off your machine and we haven't finished there with all of the machines you will receive two meters of fabric so four half meters in different colors but with this machine we're also going to give you a walking foot and a free motion embroidery foot so the bundle that you're getting for free is worth 80 pounds so this is why I want you to go for this machine. It's compact, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space, even with the extension table on, but it is so innovative. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of genre of sewing that you're interested in, whether it's dressmaking or quilting, or if you're bag making, if you're making homewares, if you're making storage items, decorative items, this is a machine that's going to be able to cope with all of that. The thing when you're looking at a sewing machine with a brand name, whether it's Elna, Janome, if it's Brother, if it's Toyota, if it's Husvana, if it's Faf, if it's Benin, any of these big names of sewing machines bring you warranties. You're getting two years with this one, but they bring you quality machines. They have to, because when you get to the stage where you are a big brand and you're the top of your game, it's very easy to lose that. One faulty machine, one substandard machine, one person who gets the machine home and thinks, well, this isn't going to do the job, that reputation comes crashing down again. Elna are right at the top of their game. So what's inside this machine, which is the important thing, is a powerful motor which will punch through even the heavier weights of fabric, even though it's compact in size. It's an easy machine to use. I'll show you that in just a second. If you can push buttons and count, then count up to 380, then you can use this sewing machine. You'll find a, a digital or a computerized sewing machine so much easier to use than electronic machines, and they have so many more features in general as well. So if you're a beginner sewer, I know with beginner sewers, you're going to be looking around in the supermarkets and in the material stores and in the mill shops, and you know hobby shops and you'll see sewing machines for about 80 pounds and I can almost guarantee that when you get hooked on sewing as you will do you're going to outgrow it within a few weeks so buy the machine for the sewer that you want to be so if you want to be a professional sewer if you want to have professional finish to your work maybe you want to sell what you're making or gift it or just have a really lovely quality project then get a really lovely quality sewing machine to go with it now then I've I've moved all of these. These are all of the accessories that you get because I wanted to show the machine in action. I'm going to change the thread, but that's kind of starting from the very beginning because it's a very good place to start so that you can see some of the stitches. Oh, what's happened there? Thread's got caught. And that's it. There we go. So I'll just change this for the red. So one of the first things you need to do is to wind the bobbin up. Oh, sorry about that. That's a bit, it's a bit loud, isn't it? Um, so where did I put the thread? Under here. <laughs> you should thread your thread through that little hole on the from the inside, and you'll you'll do this a few times, and then you'll decide you've got a life. And just hold on to the side and wind it around a bit by hand. This is going to go on the spool holder here. But then I'm going to go, I'm kind of doing this backwards. There's like a, a screw thing on the side. Oh, sorry, on the top. It looks like a screw, but it's not. It's a tension disc. So your thread's going to go around that disc. And then onto here like so. Always make sure that your thread comes off the top so you can tell which way around the bobbin is. It's got the name of the thread at the top so it's going to come off in that direction because that's the way that the thread has been designed to. So I put my spool holder on here. One that just a little bit tighter. I'm not going to use the foot pedal in this instance. I'm just going to clip over the bobbin here. That disengages the, um, the motor. So, oh, sorry about that. So the needle isn't going to go up and down. If I try and choose a stitch, by the way, when that's engaged, I've got a picture of a bobbin here. It's not going to let me. And my bobbin's flashing at me to say, look, you're winding me. Stop pressing buttons, for goodness sake. But I can press the start button. Now, because your thread is already going through this tension, it's being wound at the right tension. That can make a difference to your stitches. 
and when the bobbin's full, it will automatically flick over and, uh, and stop winding. And always use your bobbin winder, um, if you're going to fill it up to the top, it will fill the exact amount that you need. Your thread shouldn't be wider than the edge of the bobbin. It should stop just inside there, but we're not going to do that now because I think it's a bit like watching paint dry after a while. Jane says, OMG, she says, that's a lot of machine for your money. Does it say well? Yes, it does. You're going to see that in just a second. So let's follow all the diagrams for the threading system. Up, down, up, down. One around there and one around there. All of these hooks that you need to go through are really important. You do need to go through them all because they can, again, affect the tension of your sewing machine. I tell you what, we've got sewing surgery on Tuesday. Um, at nine o'clock. Um, that's where you've, you've been asking me so many questions. Some of them to do with products, some of them to do with sewing machines, and some of them to do with materials, and some are just to do with techniques and things like that. Um, so on Tuesday, is it this machine we've got? Can't remember. Um, it's Tuesday the 7th at 10 o'clock. And I've got questions on drawn work, what is drawn work, some of the heirloom stitches on the machine. I've had questions about adhesives, so I'm going to be explaining the difference between your 505s, your 404s and your grippy sprays. Um, but we'll have a chat about tensions, because one of the questions I get asked more than anything else on social media is, um, the tension's not right on my machine, all my stitches are bunching up, my stitches are looping, um, my stitches are pulling the fabric and they're puckering. And poor old tension, it's probably not his fault. So we'll have a chat about tension on Tuesday. But this is where I was going around the trees and the houses. To get to, all of these little hooks are important that you thread your thread through because they affect the tension of your thread. What also or mainly affects the tension of your thread is the fact that the foot is up. So at the moment, those tensions aren't engaged. I can pull the thread through freely. If I put my foot down, that should be really firm. If it's not, re-thread it because you haven't engaged the tensions. We do have a needle threader, so you make sure that the needle is in the correct position. If I press the needle down and then back up again, it was beeping up because I hadn't flicked the bobbin over, the needle's now in the right position for threading. So your needle threader is on the side here. That clicks in place, not all of them do with needle threaders, sometimes it's quite a, a challenge to hold it in place while you're threading. You'll go across the front of the hook, in between those two little prongs and if you raise the thread slightly and hold on to it you'll find it threads easier and then when we let go of this and let go of that thread it'll form a loop at the back of the needle here so all you need to do is to grab hold of that and pull it through and your needle's threaded. Now on the bottom of the machine your bottom bobbin always goes in with your thread coming off the bottom in the shape of the letter E and it's a drop-in bobbin, so I'm going to just drop it in there and then pull this forward. You can just see that little hook sticking up, that's to do the tension, and there's another groove inside here. But if you pull your thread forward and to the left, it'll automatically go into those tension slots, then go around the edge here, and this is a blade, so that is going to just snip off the edge of your thread. And then you're ready to sew. So let's do it. I'll just cut my, whoops, I'm just going to cut my fabric down. A little bit. Right. So you will have, again, I'm not using the foot pedal, so I can do it like this. So let's just start with a straight stitch. Any sewing machine, when you first switch it on, if it's a computer, computerized machine, will go to a straight stitch. Let's turn the speed control down, and this is the slowest that we're going to sew. As a complete beginner, you may be comfortable with this. As you get more confident, you can go right up to, I'm talking off the top of my head, that sounds to me like 750 stitches a minute. I, I've demonstrated hundreds of sewing machines over the last 15 years. Sounds about 750, I'm probably going to be corrected on that by Elna, but it's, it's a very fast machine. A lot of domestic sewing machines are between 450 and 650, so this is quite fast. Um, important to look at is the quality of the stitches. So this is just a universal needle. The machine hasn't been used very much. It doesn't need changing yet, but the stitch should look the same on both sides. That's when you could adjust the tension. That's when I'll, I'll allow you to touch poor old tension, um, but it, it'll be fine. The most of your work, it'll look exactly the same on both sides. So perfect little stitch here, perfect little stitch there. 
but let's have a look at some of the decorative stitches because you don't you don't buy a machine like this for a straight stitch if you're only going to use a straight stitch just go and buy one of those supermarket ones for 80 quid with this machine where's my foot pedal gone up the side um, we have decorative stitches so let's just choose a Oh gosh, there's so many, so many, so many. That's my favourite one. Number 61 is one of my favourites. Now you have different modes here. So you'll see at the side of the machine we have one, two, A, A. And those are the different modes. So when you switch the machine on, it goes to the utility stitches, which is mode one. I want to go to mode two, which is the decorative stitches. So I'm going to press the mode button, which is on the side here. So at the moment on one, that's lit up so I can see. Mode two, there you go, mode two. And what stitch did I say I wanted number 61? So now I'm going to go over to the tens and units bar. Two, three, four, five, six, one. And the stitch has already been set. It's advising me which foot to use, the stitch width and the stitch length. Now with some of the stitches, you can override that so you can make the stitch narrower or longer. But I don't want to. I'll leave that exactly as it was. And then I'm just going to press that start button. And away we go. Now it's, you wouldn't normally sew like this. You wouldn't sew from the back and you wouldn't walk away from your work. All I'm doing with the fabric is guiding it in a straight line. With a lot of the decorative stitches, and you see with this one, the fabric's going to start jumping backwards and forwards, so I don't want to inhibit that. So I'm guiding it. I'm not pulling it, I'm not pushing it. And you can just see from the back there that stitch is starting to come out beautifully. And it's quick. I do like that machine. It's like a twisted ribbon. I'll show you more, more, different, uh, more difference in just a second. And then we'll stop. I was 50 stitches a minute out there. Apparently we are 700 stitches a minute. So I wasn't, wasn't too far off. And there is your actual stitch. Isn't that so pretty? Look at that, that's so precise. And again, the perfection test. Does it look as good from the back as it does from the front? Yes, it jolly well does. And how quiet was that as well? So. We've had a, a message from Gabriel. Oh, is that on Facebook? Oh, OK. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm talking to Joe, my director. It's, it must seem very strange if you're new to the world of shopping telly and you have these presenters talking to nobody. Sorry, what? Sorry? What do we? So this is Joe, who's in, in my ear. This, this is what happens. I've got earpiece there and Joe's talking to me. So he said, Gabriel's put a message on Facebook, so here we go. Morning, Debbie, great show. Just like to say that Sewing Street customer service is fantastic. And could you pass on to them? Thank you. Yes, we will do. We will do. Um, Hayley is in charge of Facebook. Um, you may have seen some messages from her on here already. Somebody was asking about the website earlier and she answers. So, yes, yeah, she'll, be, she'll be watching, I'm sure, and she'll pick up your message and we'll pass those on. Thank you very much. Uh, Sandra says, great to see Debbie on Sewing Street Live. I love the sewing shows. Debbie is so inspirational. Oh, go on. So inspirational. I love listening to all her tips and seeing her wonderful ideas. Thank you. I really appreciate that, especially in this present climate. Thank you, Sewing Street and Debbie. And then Morag says, morning, Debbie. I'm speaking to you through the TV. <laughs> I'm speaking to you back, Morag, through your TV. Um, I ordered your Easter panels. Oh, let me know what you're going to make and show pictures as well. And she's made a rainbow. So many of you making rainbows, that's beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, Alison, oh, hi, Alison. She says, I have the Janome equivalent to the lovely Juku demonstrating in the week. I always buy the Janome needles because with some of the cheaper brands, the machine needles, needle thread doesn't work, which is very frustrating. Janome must have a larger eye. Um, yeah, we've got lots of sewing machines for you. We've got lots of Elna. Janome is the same company as Elna, so that, that's why we've got Janome needles. It's the same thing. And, um, and Juki as well. So, OK, what are we doing? Let's have a look at our feet. Yep, still there. You're getting two bonuses. I did, I did say uh, in, in the first hour, we were talking about keeping kids occupied in the holidays. 
And uh, when I was little, if I, if I complained to my mum that I was bored, uh, what can I do? Uh, I'd get take your shoes and socks off and play with your toes. The things that you used to get told, you must have been the same as well. Um, my hair would grow quicker if I wore it in a ponytail. That's because my mum didn't... D your hair looks like curtains, our Deborah. So everything had to be tied back, but it'll grow quicker. My chips are hot, put more vinegar on them, that'll cool them down. My, my first mother-in-law um, said to my eldest boy, who's now nearly 40, um, <laughs> he said, why have I got a belly button? And she said, oh, that's where, when you were in the oven, that's where your mother put the skewer to see if you were done. I know. <laughs> yeah, what, what were you told? <laughs> there's there's a, a lot of people that were told that uh, the ice cream van only played the tune when they'd run out of ice cream. Heard that one before. But yeah, some very strange things. I used to think, this is going completely away from sewing, I know. Um, there used to be um, an advert on the TV when I was little for Sandy Manport. And I don't know if you remember it, there was a, a guy in a black cape and he got one of these big Spanish hats and he, he did that. And I used to be told that if you don't go to sleep on time, then the Sandman would come and put sand in your eyes. And if you wake up in the morning, you've got gritty bits in your eyes, it's because you didn't go to sleep on time, because that was the sand that the Sandman put in there. And I thought it was the Sandman. So I mean, if I don't go to sleep, this man in a cloak with a big hat's going to come in and put sand in my eyes. It's child abuse. Anyway, back to sewing. You're getting the free walking foot. So the walking foot's going to feed your fabric if you're sewing through lots of layers of fabric, evenly from the top at the same time as the bottom. This is perfect for quilters. There is your free motion embroidery foot. So you can do free motion embroidery or free embroidery or you can actually darn with this as well. In fact, should we do that in surgery? I'll ask myself, Debbie, how do I darn a pair of jeans? Oh, I'll answer that on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Keep your questions coming in. This one is an over edge foot. So the two little bars in the centre here help to keep the fabric flat and there's a little brush on the side and this one's going to tuck in the frayed edges on woven fabric as you're sewing so it gives a nice neat edge and there is an over edge stitch for you to use that in conjunction with. This is a quarter inch foot so this is perfect for patchworkers. Um, the needle is exactly a quarter of an inch from the edge and there's a guide on the edge there as well so that's great for um, echo quilting. So you can put this in the, in the ditch and you're sewing exactly a quarter of an inch away. Um, we have a zipper stitch, which you would a stitch foot, which you would expect. This one is a satin stitch foot, and it's clear, so you can see where you're going. But it's also got two metal bars underneath there, so it raises the foot away from satin stitches to give a neater effect. And this one is a blind hem foot, so that's for invisible hemming on garments or on um, on curtains and things like that. You've also got a buttonhole foot. With the attachment, the attachment is for sewing buttonholes onto thicker fabric. And then there's all of your bobbins and your extra spool holder and spare needles and quick and pick and screwdriver and everything else that you would expect to find with the sewing machine. All for £569. So, they say buy cheap, buy twice. If you're, I mean, to be, to be honest, if you're only going to do a few repairs, if you're not intending to dress make, bag make, quilting, um, curtain making, home wires, aprons, what, whatever it is you're making. If all you're going to do is to sew up the heel of the school trousers when they go back to school, um, this machine is wasted on you. This is a machine that you can really kind of expand your sewing skills. So if you're a basic sewer at the moment and you've never used a decorative stitch and you've never sewn a buttonhole in anything, you've never used an over edge stitch, then this is the machine that can kind of support you as you're going through your sewing journey, if you will. Now I did say that we had um, some letters on here as well. We have the alphabet, which is in, which is in the booklet, but you'll get the idea. So, I need to go on to mode A. Although, no, no, let's not do that just yet. So I'm just talking to myself there as I'm unplugging it. Straight back to a straight stitch. Um, let's see how we can join together some of the decorative stitches. So I can go to mode two again. So the lights lit up on number two here. And let's go for number 45, which is a heart. And I'm going to press memory. And it's telling me that number 45 is um, stitch one. 
and then I can go for, let's do 31, which is a satin stitch, and memory. Oh, sorry, press mode, look at me. I'm just looking at letter M's, memory. Um, I've added number two, haven't I? I'll tell you what, off and on again, let's start again. This is because I'm sewing backwards. Well, that's my excuse anyway. So mode two. And we wanted hearts, which is number 45. Memory. And then I was going to go for leaves. So let's go for 32. Memory. And then let's go on to the next page. And I will do 75. Oh, up we go. Memory, and then a scroll, which is 83. Memory. You can do different modes. So at this point, I want to change modes and go to the alphabet. Um, I haven't got the manual in front of me, so we'll make it up and see what happens. So let's go for stitch number 50. Memory. This will be interesting. Um, I hope I don't spell a swear word. And then let's go for uh, 55. Memory. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny, wouldn't it? Um, and let, let's go up to, uh, oh, number 15, memory, and down to 11, memory. I think some of those are going to be numbers. And then we'll press start and see what jolly well happens. <laughs> so it's telling me um, what stitch is stitching out. So 45, on to 32, up to 75. Number 83, and 15, that's the fifth stitch, remember? And then 15, 11, and 8. And when it's finished, it will automatically stop, and I can snip and... <laughs> OTFB. That probably does stand for something that is completely inappropriate. Um, so I've got, an, I've got a two lowercase and two uppercases, just to show you that it does the both. But again, you can program it up to 20 of these or to stitch all in a row. Um, so you can spell out words. You could put maybe handmade onto a ribbon and stitch that into your, um, into your quilting or your projects. Um, made by and your name on there. Particularly if you've got an unusual spelling for your name. You know, it's quite, quite difficult to buy things pre-printed. Or if you have um, a quilted... Um, a quilt that you want to put a label on there, you could personalise your own label. I'll tell you what I did once, um, about monogramming, a friend of mine, going back a few years, um, was getting married and he, th th they had some very expensive Italian suits and shirts made and they wanted to wear them afterwards. So we wanted things monogramming but not actually stitched onto the shirt so that they could still wear them. So we embroidered all of the, the jobs or the roles of, of the chaps, so the groom, the father of the groom, um, the uh, ushers, I can't remember, best man, uh, onto ribbon and then just tacked the ribbon onto the cuff. So everybody had their label and the, the, the blue ribbon was the same colour as the ties and the waistcoats and everything. And then that could be taken off afterwards so that they could use them again. No reason why you couldn't. Oh, Ross has emailed in. Hello, Ross, or messaged in. Um, in connection with the 570 machine, how heavy is it? I don't know. Apparently it's six and a half kilograms, um, which isn't actually very heavy. I mean, I'm picking it up from a funny angle here. I wouldn't like to carry it around all day, but it's certainly a machine that I could lift up and down. You know, I, I am lucky enough to have a dedicated sewing house. Um, <laughs> just getting that way. So I can leave my sewing machine out all day. Most people can't. So if you do need to lift it up and put it away, it's not... It's not that heavy, six and a half kilos. It's substantial, I mean, you can get a lot lighter sewing machines, um, but it's, it's not particularly heavy. And I like the size of it as well, Ross, it's compact. So although you've got all of these features, on, on a compact machine that doesn't take up too much space, I think is, it's absolutely perfect. Um, to be honest, if you're quilting, and if you're making big quilts, you may want to look at a machine with a bigger throat, which is this area here. Um, so if you have a look on our website, we do have the, um, 
the 720, so I'm looking at it right now. Um, we do have the 720 available for you. That has got a much bigger space here, but it's a much bigger machine and it's a much faster machine and a much heavier machine with a much bigger extension table and much more stitches. Um, but if you're quilting, that, that's the only reservation I'd have about this machine because you can't roll a lot of fabric up inside here if that's what you're doing as you're stippling. Doing smaller projects, that's absolutely fine. And if you are doing a little bit of quilting, but you're doing a little bit of dressmaking and a little bit of curtain making, then you've got a, a machine that will certainly cope with all of that. Oh, now then, with the bundle, now remember, we are giving you two metres of fabric and the walking foot and the free motion embroidery foot. Those are for free and those are worth about £80. Um, but we are limited in the amount of bundles that we have with this deal. So um, may as well. If you're going to go for it, go for it while you get the free bundle. It'll still be available without the bundle, still be the same price, but you won't get your £80 worth when we sell out of the bundle option. So worth getting hold of those while we have them. So you can drop the feed dogs on the machine if you're free motion embroidering. A lot of machines will come with a plastic plate that goes over the top of the feed dogs. I tend to find they jump out somewhat. Um, you can twin needle sew with the machine as well, that's no problem. And you can sew through different weights of fabric and different types of fabric. Stretch fabric is really popular at the moment. Um, stretch fabric patterns or garments made from stretch fabric are really um, selling really well at the moment. Because they're simple, because you don't need to put zips in, you don't need any kind of fastenings, you're probably not going to need darts. They're easy, pro uh, easy projects to make or easy garments to make, but you do need specific stitches for them and the machine comes with those as well. I love the thread snipper, not all machines will come with that. Um, needle up down, most machines will come with those these days, but not necessarily with a lock stitch. And a lock stitch, you can program this in with the memory thing as well. Um, the lock stitch will give three or four stitches on top of each other so it doesn't spoil the design of decorative stitches. I know look, the start and end of a seam you'd normally reverse stitch but that, um, that does the same kind of thing um, but without spoiling the line of the design. Okay, let me know if you want me to demonstrate anything particular, won't you? Send your messages through. Otherwise I'll just carry on rabbiting away. Actually, we've got some more bits and bobs in the show, haven't we? So, should we, should we show you something? Oh, now then. Freezer paper. This is worth sticking on your order. Just move all of those out of the way. Freezer paper was designed to wrap your food in and put it in the freezer. Crafters have found it and completely taken it over. So, if you haven't seen it before, freezer paper has a waxy side to one side and a matte side to the other. This, oh, sorry, that's probably going to be very noisy as I'm doing that, so I'll try and, try and be, be gentle. So the waxy side, when you heat it, will stick to fabric, but it will peel away. I can show you this, actually, while we're here. So you'll find a lot of quilters will use, use this with applique. Sorry about that. I'll just cut some off so I'm not being quite so noisy. You can use it with the English paper piecing. You can use it with um, needle turn applique and so for instance if you're English paper piecing you can actually print out your shapes on your printer. This will go through um, an inkjet printer, not a laser printer, because a laser printer uses heat and that will melt the wax on the bottom and that's going to ruin your printer. But if you have a laser printer, this will go through your printing machine. So you can print out as many hexagons, diamonds, or whatever shapes you like that you can get on the internet. Then you cut out those shapes individually. You will iron that shape to the back of your fabric. So let's just do a, a square-ish for now, and I'll find some coloured fabric so you can see what I'm doing. So the fabric's a bit creased up, this is rather rather impromptu. So we can iron this over the top here. You don't need a vast amount of heat and then you would cut around said shape like so. and then you can fold over. You can still use a, a glue stick I tend to use if I'm doing something like this. Fold this over and then you can sew around the top 
and then this will easily peel away afterwards. It's not sticky sticky, it just adheres slightly, so that will easily peel away and then you can even reuse it again. The sticky, I say sticky, the waxy, um, the adhesion will stay there for four or five times so you can keep using the shapes over and over again. Um, another thing you can do, yeah, don't use it the wrong way around because you'll get wax all over your eye. It won't ruin it because it's, it's wax and it'll wipe away, but you've, you've wasted a bit of paper there, haven't you? So always make sure shiny side down when you're going to put this down on your paper. Um, you can also use this to stabilise your fabric. So imagine that's a big A4 piece of fabric. I can now put that fabric through the printer. You can't put fabric on its own through a printer, it's going to need stabilising in some manner, um, but your, um, your wax paper can act like a carrier, so you can now print, again not your laser jet printer, it'll be your um, inkjet printer, so you can print onto your fabric, and then when you iron that, um, the ink will become permanent, so you can wash it and it's not going to come away again. So that's a nice little trick for you. If you have a cutting machine that can cut fabric, your fabric's going to need stabilising. So this could be your stabiliser on the back, but again, it doesn't leave any sticky residue, and it's easy to peel away as well. If you are doing um, applique, she says, trying to find a pen that I know I put here earlier. Honestly, you should see the mess down here. Can't find it. It's all my mess. Um, but it is a bit of a mess. <laughs> see, this, this is the kind of thing that is... Oh, there's my pen! There's my rubber gloves. I told you we were being careful. So, if I'm appliquing, I can draw my shape <laughs> oh, we're real here, aren't we? Um, so if I wanted to draw, say, a... maybe a, a moth... dragonfly... nothing light, really, is it? Um, I can draw this butterfly a bit quick. Draw it onto my wax paper. And there's lots of different techniques you can use with this as well. So, kind of butterfly-like, isn't it? Kind of. So this can now go onto my fabric. It's not going to spoil it, it's not going to leave any sticky residue. And now I can embroider around it. I can actually quilt up to it. So if you've ever seen um, Trapunto quilting, um, you'll normally sew an outline with wash away um, stabiliser, uh, sorry, thread, and then you'll do your quilting right up to the edge. Maybe put a little bit of padding behind it. But you can actually use your template here instead of marking your fabric. And just keep sewing and stippling all around as busy as you want it to be and then you can peel this away and you'll have the design left there. On a similar vein, when that's sewing, you can use this to make stencils so you can have um, a reverse st a stencil there as well. So if you're painting fabric, you can paint over the top. This is oh, still the same butterfly that I just used, just cut the edge there. So you can use your paints, your brushes, your sponges, whatever it is you're using to paint. So I'm just, just doing an impression of paint there. And then again, when you peel it away, you've got your uh, relief. And on the same effect with the piece that's remaining, you could do the same again. But this time, it's reversed. <laughs> it's a hippo, isn't it? Yeah, so there's his eyes and there's his little ears and a big tooth and a big hippo body. <laughs> but you get the idea. Freezer paper isn't just for putting things in the freezer. There are lots and lots of uses for it, no matter what kind of sewing um, you're actually into. And again, it's not going to damage your fabric and it's not going to leave sticky residue on them. We sell out of this so much, you know. So you can cut through it. I would use a paper scissors when you're cutting through it. You can use your rotary cutter on this as well. And you're getting absolutely nerds. <clears throat> what I do with my rotary cutters, I, I have two. I've actually got a lot more than two. Um, but I have most, well, most of them are my fabric cutters. 
and then I've got a paper cutter as well so never the twain shall meet because just like cutting through paper with your scissors cutting through paper with your rotary cutters is going to blunt quicker than it will through cutting through fabric because paper is made out of wood basically and it's a lot tougher than fabric so we have some spare blades for you as well and they are here so these are 45 mil. that's the most common size of rotary cutter um, of rotary cutter blade what I, I tend to do as well is save the packaging that these come in and I'll put the blunt ones back in there to throw them away because even when they're blunt they're very very sharp if that makes sense um, so that's what I do I like to save them three of those for £8.99 is a great price and these are universal so they should fit in any 45 millimeter um, rotary cutter so whether you've got an Ulfra or you've got a Fiskars or um, you know whichever one you have those are going to fit fine for just £8.99 pence. another one of those items when you take an advantage of that 3 95 postage that you bring you all day that is worth stocking up on. a bit like with the needles you going to wear through them eventually so while we've got great prices may as well just stock, stock up on those it's there okay and have a look on the website for lots of other stuff that we haven't had time to get through in the show i've got some new things for you though it's a pin cushion i have a thing about sticking pins in animals like i can't do it so to me that would make a nice little ornament He's supposed to be a pink cushion, but I, I don't know. I, I just I can't bring myself to. But it is very cute. It could be a little mascot. Unless you really wanted to stick pins in him. I'm doing a great selling point on this, aren't I? It's only £14.99. But it is, it is lovely. It's a nice little chap with his scarf on, look. So £14.99 for our, our, our little, little sausage dog. OK, we have some fabric bundles. We've got tables and cutters and rubbish. I've got two sewing machines, a sewing box, two sewing boxes, another ironing mat. There's some jewellery stuff down here as well. Because normally when we're finished here, that sign comes down and jewellery maker goes up. So we've got lots of jewellery maker type things. Well, they're not doing that at the moment. That would, that's what, what used to happen before we became very strange. So this is your Sophie tote bag. Um, this is in the previous hour. Um, so if you've just joined us now, leave it a few hours and you should be able to catch up on YouTube. But basically there's everything that you need in here, literally everything apart from your sewing machine and thread, to make one of these bags. It's a quilt as you go bag, so your um, panels and your instructions, your pattern are already printed onto the wadding. You're getting the handle included as well. And then enough fabric, not just to make the bag, but probably to make another three bags as well. You need more wadding, obviously. So these are the fabric strips that you're going to need. They're two and a half inches wide, and there are 16 of those in total. Every one of those is a slightly different print, but the colours coordinate perfectly. Then we have four fat quarters, which are oversized fat quarters, all printed on 100% cotton. So there's that one and that one, and there's two more inside here as well. And there is lining fabric included. There is so much left over from this kit, you wouldn't believe. And it's only £39.99. If it was £39.99 for the bag kit, then that's great value. That's a, that's a good price. But when you consider your leftovers, which is more than half, I think, of the fabric that we're giving you, that is great value for money. Uh, we did have two options at 9 o'clock. The, uh, the other one is sold out. The Paisley Marmalade's gone. But we do have some of those plum ones left. Um, I just want to mention our basting spray again. This is a June Taylor basting spray. Rather difficult to get hold of this one, but we got it. Um, so this is um, it's designed, or June has designed this, to baste layers of quilts together to save you pinning or tacking them. Um, I use a basting spray to make um, fleece or wadding that isn't fusible, fusible. And you can reposition it so you can peel it away and you can put it back again. The basting spray is useful to use if you're going for the quilt as you go mug mats that we had in the previous hour to set down the first square. They're perfect for applique as well, so much easier than pinning applique because you don't have to sew around the pins. And this is suitable for use with the sewing machine as well. So it's £12.49 and it's a 10 ounce spray can, which is an awful lot for your money. So that's PFYV06 uh, is the item number there. Three hours goes really quickly, doesn't it? 
And the thing is, when we become really successful at these three hours, it'll be four then, won't it? But I'm hoping we're not going to go early. I hope we go later when we go to four hours, because there is no way I'm getting up at three o'clock in the morning. Um, right, tomorrow, John's going to be with you. And this is what's coming up. He has fabulous fabrics at 8 o'clock. Creative Grid Stripology and Tools is at 9 o'clock in the morning. And at 10 o'clock, it's your Juki NX7 sewing machine. Um, Neil's going to be with you on Monday. Sorry about that. And on Tuesday... Only joking, Neil. Um, <laughs> on Tuesday I'm going to be back with um, sewing surgery, uh, that's at 9 o'clock and we have a brand new overlocking machine as well so if you've always fancied an, an overlocker or maybe you don't understand them or you think oh, no, that, that, that threading is just too confusing for me um, then do join me on Tuesday morning and I shall demystify your overlocker and make you realise why um, it's going to be such an important tool and um, certainly if you're dressmaking. So I, I may be watching for a little while on Monday so I, sh I should be with you for a bit um, but Tuesday is when we're going to be back again with sewing surgery. If you have a look on our Facebook page on Sewing Street TV um, there is an event there that Hayley's created so again if you've got any questions you can still keep bringing them in. We've had, we've had loads for this week so hopefully I'll get through those as many as I can. Right we're coming up to the end of the show here we've still got things that I haven't even shown you so if you can take a look on our website on sewingstreet.com and uh, remember but oh, oh, we've got a design role race. This is something that John's organised, isn't it? Um, have a look at the panels on sewingstreet.com. So have a look at all the details on our website. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you again Tuesday. Bye bye.